the Republic of Kenya, a former British colony, but one which has managed to outlive the negative tenets of colonialism and has gone ahead to grow a democratic system of governance. We have seen them having a peaceful transition of power right from Jomo Kenyatta to um, Arab Moi to Mwai Kibaki to Hure Kenyatta. And now the question remains, who will take over from that particular presidency? Well, that and much more in this conversation, we shall be exploring the rift and the, the battle between the two camps, one headed by a former uh, Prime Minister of the Republic of, of Kenya, uh, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, who is heading the Azimio La, the Azimio La Umoja camp, against um, the current Deputy President, William Arab Ruto, who is also the leader of the United Democratic Alliance Coalition. Well, these two camps have gone ahead. We have seen the campaigns. But I think what um, we have managed to appreciate from these campaigns is how peaceful and how you know, non-violent they've been compared to many African states where elections you know, seem to be more like war zones. Well, that and much more shall explore in this particular conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Youth Roundtable. I'm joined by, of course, a panel of distinguished young people and I shall introduce them to you straight away. We hope that along the conversation we shall be joined by one of our Kenyan comrades. He's only held up somewhere, but yeah, we hope that you'll join us along the way. I'll introduce my panelists, uh, beginning from my immediate left, Helen Nsima, the former vice president of the Uganda National Students Association, currently a youth leader from Iwanda district, but also the CEO of Variate Products. Helen, many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. You want to say hello to our viewers this afternoon? Yes, good afternoon, viewers. As mentioned, um, Helen Nsima. And I'm glad to be here. All right. Um, thank you very much, Helen. Next to Helen is a first timer on the Youth Roundtable, Mr. Carlos Ogik, who is a lawyer, but also I know that he has interest around good governance and international relations. He's also a lecturer. Many thanks for joining us, Comrade Carlos. Thank you, Mr. Moses, and thank you, viewers. I am very glad to be in this panel of very wonderful people, and I'm looking forward to having a nice debate. Well, thank you. Um, next to Ogif is someone who I'm sure if you follow this show religiously, you've seen this face before. Yv Yvonne Mpambara, equally a lawyer and um, the director of the African Youth Caucus, a Harvard, um, how should I call it? A Harvard model, something like that. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for afternoon. having me, Moses. I'm glad to be here as well. I'm looking forward to the deliberations. Okay, uh, the last panelist on the show, as of now, as yet, is Brian Atuheire, the Executive Director of African Initiative on Food Security and Environment. Brian, many thanks for joining us. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, this afternoon, I think, is going to be exciting because uh, of the two going to happen and uh, having food through. Mm. I wish our neighbors were. Mm. I hope the results are in, my, in our favor, mm -hmm. as of Kenya Kwanzaa. That's it. Okay, Kenya Kwanza. I think let's just begin from, from right there now that you've brought it up. The Kenya Kwanza um, coalition led by the Deputy President William Ruto, uh, in my view, has run a very uh, vehement and, you know, the whole hustler narrative campaign and the whole bottom-up approach to the economy and the whole, you know, the, I, 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 in my view, I think that William Ruto has played a role in changing the narrative of Kenyan politics. His campaign has been based on issues and he has managed to sort of toil away from the whole tribal and the whole, you know, um, yeah, yeah, tribal, if I'm to call it. He has managed to base his campaign more on issues. Do you think that his campaign represents a shift in the paradigm of Kenyan politics? What his I, candidature, what, 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 whether, whether he wins uh, or loses, he has set uh, a precedence. And uh, the, the Kenyan elite and the media, mm. Whether he loses or wins, are part of the state, mm. and uh, he has managed to, to show how elites betray their countries very well mm. without necessarily saying it. Uh, that's why on Saturday, uh, while all TV stations were relaying uh, the campaigns of Raila Odinga, mm. they could not show Ruto mm. because the, because Mamangina literally capt captured the media. Mm. But to tell you one thing is that. It seems the Azim, why the Azimio campaign is not issue best. Mm. It's because it is stuck in 2007. And as a person who has followed politics in Kenya, because you see, 2007 was a break to say never shall we again. Mm. 
we have rigged this election it has been this ugly we must be free and fair mm. and therefore the issues of constitutional reform which were, which had been uh, put in the bbi and which ruto very mentally opposed mm. and later defeated because even even the parliament mm. although they got uh, little numbers but mm. they were close mm. against the state but also courts in kenya mm. managed to hit the bbi out mm. so the kenya the, the kenya as the azmir la umoja one party alliance their campaign is still about bbi mm. which is hopeless and useless mm. and my party here supports most of my party members most of them support uh, azmir mm. may support kenya kwanza because our where we are in uganda kenya has gone beyond that now what is remaining is that people have money in their pockets Mm. And that's the campaign Ruto is running. Mm. Is not so these ones are still stuck on democracy, constitutionalism. Those ones have been achieved and mm. consolidated for the last maybe 10 years. Mm. And moving forward, the people of Kenya must have food on their table, must mm. have money in their pockets, must grow from middle income to maybe first world. Yeah. And and that's that's what the, Ken- the Kenyan uh, election is about. And I hope that Kenyans will look through yeah. what puts money in, in their pockets and food on the table mm. because for the concern and freedoms they have. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Helen, let me just come to you. In 2007, we saw the post-election violence. And on one side was uh, Mwai Kibaki, and then on the other side was um, Raila Odinga. You know, but the, the, the two vehement orchestrators of this violence, at least according to how ICC you know, uh, put it was William Ruto and of course Uhuru Kenyatta, plus also others, the Arab songs and all that. But the point here is that the level of violence that was meted on the ordinary citizens of Kenya in 2007, but also we saw some pocket cases in 2013, but not so much. Do you anticipate violence post-elections in Kenya, in your own perspective, the way you've analyzed the election, from the way they've been running their campaigns? Do you think that what happened in 2007 could happen again and i mean not to be pessimistic but what do you think about the violence precisely yeah uh, follow the way we've followed kenyan politics i think we've known that their campaigns are usually actually peaceful like mm. they usually have peaceful campaigns so this is not new mm. but the aftermath is usually what scares us and i'm sure right now even kenyans are scared of the aftermath and yes we have seen some actually coming to Uganda. To, yes, yeah. to Uganda. We saw the U.S. mission ban- yeah. to kind of banning the travels to Kenya and still put the post down later on because mm. of Kenyan saying this. It's not fair. It yeah. hasn't happened. And you, but yes, everyone <coughs> is on tenterhooks right now because of what has been happening, mm. and I- I- history usually repeats itself, especially mm. when it comes to politics. So yeah. If the question is, do we anticipate it? Yes, we do. Why? Because we are having two different camps who, of course, do not agree with each other, mm. of course, have history, of course, are, even if, let's say, Ruto has tried to move away from the tribal, we cannot believe that it has actually gone away. The mm. Kalenjin will always have the Lu, will have the Kikuyu, and... Mm. Yes, at some point after the results are announced, mm. we, I, 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 I think, mm. especially if they are not in favor of those, we can always have anticipate that there is always a violent side. Yeah. For example, in Uganda here, if you asked which party has more violent people, mm-hmm. you would literally say noob because of mm. the energized youth yeah. that, that the party has. Mm. So. If the energized youth of Kenya are like the energized youth of Uganda, mm. if they belong to a certain party and it doesn't win, mm. we should expect that. And I think as a country, Kenya should put measures to regulate that because like Comrade Brian said, never again. Yeah. So let us, as, as a country, Kenya, or as a region, IAC, we should be looking ahead of that. We shouldn't just hope that there will be a peaceful election. No, mm. we should take measures Kenya should take measures mm. to say that never again, 2007 should never come again. Okay, fair enough. Um, Carlos Ogik, mm. you're an international relations scholar. And um, let's just examine shortly the personalities of these two candidates. Mm. William Ruto, um, a currently deputy president, but also you know that he has served in several ministerial positions. Mm. But also um, the narrative around his personality is one that 
is very violent. Mm. I mean, if you asked any Kenyan, they'll tell you that this man, should you dare rig his election, he will actually, he has capacity of bringing down the walls of mm. Kenya. Mm. Yes. Why should he rig his election? <laughs> so, so, so that is the narrative around the personality of William Ruto. Mm. When you look at the at 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 Raila Odinga, mm. uh, the, the people see more more of a statesman, you know, someone who is willing to to shake his 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 rival's hands and things like that. Mm. Do you think that these two personalities, different as as they seem, play a role in whether we shall have violence in Kenya or not? Well, I think uh, I want to relate it to the question the way you asked. Mm. Uh, in international relations, first of all, we believe. Uh, the nature of leaders who are in power determine the policies that the country puts aside. That's right. Especially when they are in their interactions with other countries. Mm. Now, if you look compared to American politics, I want to bring uh, the Republicans and then the Democrats on one side. Uh, you look at the Republicans, they have always been fronting candidates who are known to be extreme. Mm. a little uh, too direct and they have a very harsh approach mm. and they are America, pro-America. Yeah. Then when you look the other side of the Democrats, you find mm. they are having a softer approach. Yeah, now mm. in international relations, we group it in two ways. There are those who we call realists mm. and then there are those that we idealist. refer to as idealists mm. or even liberal Democrats. Yes. Now, if you look at the personality of Raila vis-a-vis uh, -vis the personality of... Uh, um, William Ruto. Ruto. You find that one of them is a practitioner of realism. And that is what he believes in his approach to the governance and even the international system. And who is that? Uh, so if I'm to say, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to avoid names. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be di diplomatic a little. Yeah. But uh, I don't want us to look at their personality only as a main thing that could shape. First of all, what is election? Mm. To me, I have my own definition of what I think election is. Election is the art of choosing someone else to do something you want done because he or she is willing to do it. Mm. Now, these are two very antagonistic sides and mm. both of them, it is a way of looking at things that we have a, a, a different way of approaching the same problem. Mm. Okay, so Raila has his own approach, which many people want to assume that is a little aggressive. Mm. Yeah, I mean uh, Ruto. Ruto. Yeah, then the other side, Raila, is riding on his other maybe soft approach. Mm. And then if you look at their uh, strategy, one is talking of economic reforms mm. and the other one is trying to create a totally new face of Kenya. Mm. So for us uh, to understand exactly what these two people are going to put on the table for, for, for Kenya, it's actually incumbent on what the other players, especially the voters, have. Today, or oh, let's say Kenya on Tuesday, they are, they are going to exercise a very big constitutional right, which is their civil right, mm. to vote and to determine who will lead Kenya in the next years. And uh, because they are going to do this, you need to know that uh, there is a big role of media in politics. And the role of media in politics, uh, we have already seen it in the polls that have been coming up, Today the poll is talking about so and so and then tomorrow the poll is giving the reward to another person. But at the end of the day, the, the media can determine the, 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 the voting that people will put in place and also the personality of the person. Like she talked about the youth. Who drives the youth most? Okay? Who speaks to the youth most? Who appeals to them. Yes, who is more appealing when he's speaking to them. So the youth always tend to side with a more side driven by energy, mm. where there is a, a lot of vigor, where someone speaks with, uh, you know, the authority and speaks to their situation. Mm. Now, when you come speaking in general terms to mm. the Kenyans, you look at also the Kenyan population. Is it like Ugandan population where the youth are dominant? So you need to know in that cup, I'm not going to give any conclusion about this, but this mm. is purely what I okay. want to look at. Fair enough. Um, Yvonne, let me come to you. Yes, You're a lawyer, and by now you've addressed <coughs> your mind to issues around uh, the principles of checks and balances, the mm. principle of the independence of the judiciary. But I believe that this independence should move beyond the judiciary to also organs like the Electoral Commission. Let us look at um, the independent, um, the IEBC. 
of Kenya. And uh, the person I put on the spotlight is the chairperson, Mr. Wafula Chebukati. You know, I, I, I believe that the electoral commission is going to play a big role in who becomes Kenya's next president. Because I have had speculatively statements, people saying that this election will, will be determined by who controls the servers. Because you know that the, the results from the different counties will be transmitted through electronic means, through servers, you know. So someone made a hypothetical statement and said that the person who will have control and access to these servers will actually win the election. So the question to you it mm -hmm. could, could be around the independence of the electoral commission. From your perspective, from your view, given its you know, historical perspective, you know, do you think that the, and as you respond, and you analyze the process through which the chairperson was actually, you know, gotten, it was actually a rigorous process. People applied and then there was vetting, there was public opinion and, and all these things before Wafula became chairperson. So do you think that the electoral commission has some level of independence and could they withstand the pressure and absorb all the, yeah, pressure, if I'm to call it, and, and to preside over a free and fair election? Uh, very interesting question. I want to start off, I would say we can begin with a history okay. of how previous elections have been and maybe where the IEBC has obviously come in a couple of times either to be on the criticism end of how people perceive it or mm. to be on the end of how the outcomes of most of these elections turn out. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, recently their court, I think it was 2017, yes. when they had to recount votes, Yes, you know, and uh, I think it was even the first time that has ever happened in any African country, you know, <laughs> where in, within a very short specific type uh, period of time, they counted votes and then they found out that, you know, there was no um, rig rig mm. rigging that happened. There was no, exactly. Yeah. And the actual winner had been the winner, I would not mention them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so from how you can tell from that kind of independence from the judiciary, mm. they were able to do that work and finish and uh, determine that the IEBC mm. had not interfered with what had happened. Mm. I think that kind of history is important for us to begin off because yeah. by the time you went to the judiciary to have this whole process, um, you know, uh, corrected mm. and it was still found out that, you know, there was no irregularity that happened, there was no rigging that happened mm. and they found out that, you know, the body was not involved like that, the way people had been, because masses had been shouting, mm. you know, oh yeah, you, the usual conspiracies, oh, the electoral body has had a whole hand in it, this is why the um, he has won, uh, that, I, I think we were saying Kenyatta, that's when he mm. had won and they had contested whether his uh, winning was actually accurate, mm. you know. Um, but then again, they've had so much criticism as a body mm. because usually people don't trust how most of these processes turn out. You because know? you know the 2013 election was overturned. Mm. Exactly, mm. Yeah. it was overturned. The overturned it was, was 2017 election. Yeah, so yes, 2017, sorry, yes, 2017 election was overturned. By yes. court, nullified. Yes, yes. nullified record. Go back. Yes. They and went it, back, I think it was exactly. Chief Justice David Maraga? Yes. Mm. Yes, Supreme Court, yes. So no, actually, I skipped all that because I wanted to save time. <laughs> okay. But then even when he went back to court, they corrected the elections and the guy, oh, sorry, Kenyatta had still won. Yeah. And uh, of course, after they went through the whole process, IABC had had nothing to do with the you know, any irregularities or anything. So it ended up turning on the positive side of how people are perceiving. But then again, there's been so much history about how, uh, you know, electoral bodies also behave at the same time, because we know most times it's very easy for, for example, a ruling mm. government to be able to inject in certain money and they have you on their side, mm. you know. So sometimes when masses are also criticizing how some of these processes take place, it's because they are trying to question if things are actually happening the way they're supposed to happen or they are not. But then the IEBC also has a huge role. I know they play in Kenya, the county governance, mm. because I know they are in charge of demarc uh, demarcating boundaries. Um, boundaries. Mm. They are in charge of you know county governance and how a lot of resources are relocated. So that is likely at, at the end of the day to create a couple of issues, especially if a body has all that power you know, for how resources are going to be um, allocated to people, how they are going to demarcate boundaries. You're going to have a lot of power in your hands. Mm. So you're most times going to be criticized, especially according to how those particular topics, mm. sensitive as they are, how they turn out. It's going to be very sensitive because at the end of the day, you have mm. to be very sure that what you're doing is accurate mm. because boundaries over history for the longest time 
have mm. always been in contestation. Like we've always contested, should this boundary be there? Should this one be there? Is Rwanda and Uganda, you know, like these are issues that we've had for a very long time. Mm. So it's definitely going to happen that they're going to be contested at a certain point. They're going to be criticized. And I know that because they hold such sensitive power, mm. it's going to be obvious that at the end of the day, people are going to question you more critically according to how most of these results turn out. Because you're also at the end of the day going to have a longer and more key role to play, you know. Mm. According to who turns out the winner, you also have that role to play on how those boundaries are going to be created, how resources are going to be allocated, which masses are within, which bounds, you know, you have a very key role to play. Mm. So the IBC, um, it has it has had a lot of criticism, but then again, we've not yet had situations where we can outright say mm. you have um, aided and abetted, you know, rigging. Mm. So then again, we can't put them on that end of the line because we've not mm. seen that level of that spectrum from yeah. their end. Yeah. So we cannot say that they've actually participated in disenfranchising Kenyans, uh, at not least yet. not as yet. Not yet. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Brian, let me come to you. One question that we cannot avoid mm. is uh, the strength and the economic progress of the Kikuyu clan, oh, sorry, of the Kikuyu tribe. Mm. We know that the house of Mumbi that constitutes of these so many Kikuyu clans are actually very powerful. They control literally Kenya's economy, they have so much money. Someone told me that if you drive along the Mombasa Highway, left and right, all that land that you see is owned by one or two families. So a factor in this election is going to be an economic factor. We cannot dispute that. Because I'll take you back into history. You know that Musalia Mudavadi was actually a favorite for the Kikuyu in the 20, as they ran towards the 2013 election, Musala Mudabadi was actually a favorite for the Kikuyu clan. But the way William, so sorry, the way William Mutu, yes, and Uhuru Kenyatta managed to, to pull that, you know, that, 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 that marriage of convenience off had also a role that was, had, had a factor of Mamangina, who you mentioned earlier on. So do you think that this election is going to be void of the Kikuyu factor? Or the Kikuyus will always d dominate this election? And now that they have begun to tilt more towards Raila, maybe, maybe it is it is Raila's Mandela moment. I, I, I want to tell something. Given the Kikuyu no, I, I want to tell something. The Kikuyus, yeah. the Kikuyus and the Kikuyu tribe having money, being powerful, is rooted on the fact that they were, they, they were at the forefront of fighting for independence of Kenya. Yes. So, so uh, if there was political stealing, they stole fast mm -hmm. and accessed more resources than other tribes. That's right. Now, the Kikuyu, the Kikuyu, what's, what this election is about actually is about the Kikuyu new leadership. Mm. Because the Kikuyu have young children, I, let me call them young people, mm. who are not from uh, these entrenched families, families, who are new. People like Indi Nyoro, mm -hmm. who can address a rally anywhere in the mountain. Mm. People like Professor Kindiki, people mm. like Moses Kuria, mm. people like now, let's regard Gashabwa, their leader, who's, mm. who is there, no, actually, regard Gashabwa, he is almost the eldest in the group. Mm. There is Anna Waiguru. In, in the uh, government. So, 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 you mentioned also Martha Karua. Mm -hmm. I, I want to mention her because do you know why? Because do you know why? <laughs> because he, she was defeated by Anna Waiguru in, in the governor race in 2017. Who could have become a uh, Ruto's running mate? That's mm -hmm. one. Two, mm -hmm. there, has, there has been ra many rallies around Karua's home but run by Anna Waiguru and the regard Gashagwa. Gashagwa. We have not seen any rally in his hometown led by herself. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've seen Professor Kindiki run the whole mountain. Actually, they are overrun. By and, and they are shocked that there are people who have got any money and they don't know its source. That's why they are harassing them. Mm. The, like, the, like after understanding that these families, mm. you cannot work around them and mm. win an election. If you, so they went, I think the hustlers went and built their financial power and they have brought their money because because when you look, <laughs> yes, they have their money. It's not it's not the hustler, the hustler movement or the Kenya Kwanza movement is broke. Mm -hmm. you, you had the, you saw Mata Karua in the debate with Rigat Gashago. Mm -hmm. Rigat Gashago saying he is worth eight hundred million Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. Mata Karua just saying she has one fifty million Kenyan shillings. That's the difference. So, 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 and, and of course, you, you saw, you saw Rigad Gashagwa being carried, being arrested, mm. being asked to pay what But way. then, should we examine the mode through which they attained all that wealth? Can you examine mm. what, the mode through which the Uhuru family got their wealth? Yes, now, we should now, examine now, it. Now, if it was land grabbing, mm -hmm. it was bad. They don't want to return it. Now, it means if you get it, you see, you see, you see another thing is trying to be pretentious. To mm. think that you will be poor and just speak and win an election. Mm. That one I have since moved on from it. Actually, you can be that by three, three types. One, you can be a leader through 
you can get a gun through violent means be led by force mm -hmm. two you can be born here because you are a king three democracy is about money it's about use because because those campaigns if you see the, the things they use the leaflets they have mm. the, the the yellow caravans of ruto mm. a lot of money is invested in that you have bought posters before you know how much they cost mm. even these posters you have seen they are vehicles branded mm. as new as last week but also uh so so the kikuyu will have an influence mm -hmm. but as of now uh i can i can without blinking my eyes i can say that uh from the mountain around Mm -hmm. uh Ruto will get between 70 and 80%. Mm. So it means the people have voted for him. But not because not because of his tribalism and what because he has raised some people who never come to prominence in that region. Mm. He he has made sure that during his term as deputy president as minister oh, worked with these yeah. people closely. Most of the young ones who could because you cannot bend an old one. It's mm. hard. Mm. But a young one whom you groom, mm. you can have influence on them. People like like I was saying, been nearly 36 years. Mm. But he can address it right anywhere in the mountain. Mm. Here, if you're 36 years, if you win a constituents, you celebrate. Though they are sure that their constituents, they have won them, mm. so they are campaigning the whole, in the whole region. Mm. So that's what, But also, that is going to create the new leaders of Kenya. Mm. For me, I think it's, it's an opportunity for these 36 year olds mm. to be president at 45. Okay. If they vote for Ruto. If yeah. they vote for Raira, the next 10 years, they are going to be uh, led by a senile, <laughs> dormant, uh, inactive. inactive president who, who I think, like Rigada has said before, mm. who is a project of, of the dynasty. Of the dynasty. Mm. And therefore, the dynasties will be, will be, mm. will be governing them indirectly. So, mm. so actually, to vote, to vote for, right. for Raira, you are voting for a powerless man mm. who cannot do anything mm. because He's 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 done. He's been explaining how Unga if Unga goes up, he's only mm. explaining those things. Mm. He doesn't look opposition. Mm. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. President. You're you're trying to debunk the the, the whole Kikuyu factor. No, but it, I think it, that, it is it is mm. important. Mm. They have the money, but mm. I'm saying there is a new Kikuyu breed mm. under Ruto, which this dynasty don't know where it came from. Mm. Nobody knows where uh, Moses, uh, Moses Kulia came Moses from. Kulia. They they just they, regret they became a member of parliament uh, 2017. That's the running mate. <laughs> like like the, yeah. the other group has probably been in for the last maybe 45 years, mm. 40 years. Mm. <laughs> These ones, they are new. Um, and you, new kids on the block. New kids on the block. Are <laughs> going to make it? Helen, <laughs> let me come to you. Very interesting arguments from my uh, comrade Brian. Uhuru Kenyatta and um, William Ruto, running mates, two-time running mates, you know, they ran a government together for 10 years, you know, they were indicted by the International Criminal Court together, you know, they, they went to the Hague together, they, they battled crimes against humanity together, you know, they've been through the thick and thin, you would imagine, but the way Uhuru, you know, choosing to support Raila Odinga, you're being in politics, does this speak to the notion that Politics, there are no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, but only permanent interests. That today we can be friends, you you will be in my government, but tomorrow my interests will change and I'll just throw you behind the bus. Mm. So is it true that politics is a game of interest purely, given what Uru Kenyatta has done to his deputy? I, I think you could speak to it in, a, in the terms of... Uh, while you're or in... there is more than meets the eye, what the lawyers call... We should look at it prima facie, <laughs> not, not on the surface of things. Maybe there, is, <laughs> maybe there is an underlying factor of you know the succession plan and the whole dynasty yeah, thing. Yeah. Because uh, just to take you back into history, we are told that at the deathbed of um, of Jomo Kenyatta was um, Arab Moy, and the promise was made that please at a time to ensure that my son takes over. Mm. And we are also told that at the deathbed of Arab Moy was Uru Kenyatta. You know, and there was a promise that you know there is my son Gideon Moy and all those things. So could could Uhuru be trying to play the long term card that okay, let's give Raila this time as we prepare Gideon Moy to mature and you know when the time comes and is you know better placed, then we can you know orchestrate okay, that kind of transition and promise that he made to Arab Moy. So do you think there's more than Mr. the eye in this betrayal, or it is just politics of interest. I don't think it's just politics of interest, mm. but at the same time, politics will always be about interest. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. whether you choose to call the deathbed wish of Arab Moy uh, an interest or 
trying to give back to a forefather mm. that is all upon a Kenyan or us, yeah. but still it's an interest. Like right. this is, they've grown up knowing that at a certain time, T, a son to the first vice president of this country has to, 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 to take over and be president. Mm. So if you have the resources to make that happen, mm. re, uh, having it in mind that at a certain point, Uhuru was given a chance, basing on, let's say, a certain discussion that was held somewhere, and they're like, my son, Kenyatta, should be president someday. Mm. So if the time has come for Raira, please, Kenyatta, do the needful. That's mm. already a political interest, yeah. regardless of whether we have friends and, and, and you know enemies. But also, it should be a lesson to, let's say, Raila Odinga, that what they have done to Ruto, could be done to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, to all political leaders in the world, like, don't go having a position or seeing a certain handshake happen and you're like, ah, this is it. Because what we are seeing right now, let's say if Raila Odinga wins the first, the, this election, it doesn't mm. mean that Raila will win the second. Mm. We could see the dynasties probably shaking hands with Ruto or another candidate. Mm. So in politics, it's usually political interest mm. and if the question is, is it more than meets the eye? There's nothing in Kenya that more than meets the eye. Mm. We know the history. We know the deathbed wishes. Mm. We know we've seen handshakes happen and be broken. Mm. So, yeah, everything has been put on, 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 only like we are seeing what is happening. Mm. We know what is happening. Like he said, the new breed is supposed mm. to be the one that changes the narrative. Mm. If what you do not want is dynasties continuing to take over, yeah. then as the new breed coming in, choose the the fifty five year old over the seventy seven year old. Yeah. And if the new breed, <laughs> <laughs> if the new breed mm. looks at the history of Kenya and is like, ah, but you know what, guys, the dynasties have done more than the newcomers, mm. or then they have the right as the voters to mm. choose the seventy seven year old over the fifty five year old. Okay, fair enough. Um, Carlos, let's just explore something about this 77-year-old mm -hmm. gentleman. Mm -hmm. The resilience. I think this is his fourth time running for the president. Fifth. Fifth, fifth time yes. running. <laughs> exactly. The resilience. He wants to be the fifth president. <laughs> the, the resilience mm -hmm. that Raila Odinga has demonstrated mm -hmm. in Kenya's politics is one that we cannot wish away. Take it or leave it. And maybe this is the, the resilience that the dynasties have 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 um have subdued to okay because you recall that in 2017 mm. Raila Odinga actually um saw himself in okay yeah. with Miguna Miguna mm. as the as the as the acting chief justice or whatever role he played you know he saw himself in mm -hmm. but never alone that the question was around the number of Kenyans that went to Nyayo Stadium to witness Raila Odinga swearing in. Mm -hmm. It was a mammoth crowd. It was millions of Kenyans. So could, do you think the resilience of this gentleman and his ability to mobilize so many Kenyans has put the dynasties at a point where they're saying, you know what, this guy has been a pain in the ass for, to us for a very long period of time mm -hmm. and let's just deal away with him. Let's give him this chance and let's just you know, put him back because otherwise he'll continue to frustrate us. Because you know that in 2013, was it 2013 or yes. 2017, mm -hmm. where the Uhuru government could not function literally, you know, walk to work and all those things, demonstrations, the government could not function. He's, he's actually the most detained <laughs> person alive in Kenya, yeah. politician. Yeah. <laughs> you see, so so that, that kind of resilience, I think, is a man you'd want to, you know what, just talk to and say, okay, what do you want? Okay, just have this and let us be. <laughs> so do you think the dynasties are, are actually subduing that kind of pressure and resilience? That Raila has demonstrated over the last couple of when 30 I, or 40 years. I, I want to say something more. Yeah, I, sure. I, I don't want you to say the dynasties. Actually, Odinga mm -hmm. is part of the dynasties. His father was vice president. Yes. Dynasties, we are saying, people who are in leadership because they, they have paternal, mostly, not maternal, possibly, paternal, paternal. paternal lineages with some people because you are said by so and so, so mm. you must be president. So I'm just saying that mm. Raida actually, before he answers, he's part of the dynasties. dynasties. Mm. But is I, I don't think he's he's so much of the core uh, we, because we, his his father was only vice president for some time. We, then we he disappeared say, we, from we the. We are simply saying Raida is why he's, 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 he's more of a dynasty. Okay, he's more of a dynasty than Ruto. He is a dynasty. He is a dynasty because there are certain families in Kenya that have been mapped as those families that you know. Yes. 
this one is not in power, it's uh, likely. Okay, this, this one, one is either one, there yeah. or it's likely they are pushing so this, this one. one yes. So and indefinitely, and you can't do it like that. Actually, you know? also the question is the Kenya Kwanza leader. Okay, thank you. Let us okay. give a gift, a chance to, okay. to respond. Uh, I think, first of all, let's not be very quick to point fingers mm. at Raila. <laughs> because uh, the presidents were set way before him. Mm. Mm. And uh, he's only being a chip of the old block. Mm. And uh, also, this is some way I want to describe it as a quid pro quo game. Mm. You scratch something my or back here, yeah, you scratch yours. Mm. Uh, because he's trying to follow the lineage, and that is his motivation. Mm. Because if you look at, uh, for example, the hustler, mm. uh, each of these people are coming out with a very good uh, concept how they can. You know, conceptualize their interests, how they can conceptualize uh, their concept to make mm. people, you know, uh, fall for it. For example, why would I call myself a hustler? Mm. There is someone who is going to find that appealing, isn't it? Mm. I'm speaking to someone's situation. Mm. Now, this other person is coming, riding in behind the, 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 the theory of uh, monarchism, uh, mm. or let me say, is riding behind the forefathers' achievements. Mm. No, but also something that I want you to expand on now that we've brought it up mm -hmm. is this campaign being run on the promise that every family that is perceived to be uh, impoverished mm. will get mm. 6,000 Kenyan shillings. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, mm. if you're in the slum area. Yes, slum yeah. area. And yes, yeah. and if you're. The Chibera. Yes, the Kibera and the Mathari areas. Mm. That if your family is actually below the poverty line, mm. the Kenyan government will give you six. Thousand Kenyan shillings per, per per annum until you know you get out of that poverty line. So that is the message from one camp. The other is saying no. Let's have a bottom mm -hmm. approach. Let us point. empower the mama bogas, the 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 border border riders, and, and and the ordinary Kenyan. Let's empower them. Then in in return, these 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 hustlers, these mm -hmm. low people will mm -hmm. run the economy. So the, the the economic approach of the two camps. Maybe you could also evaluate it as you make your point. I want to assume that the economic uh, evaluation should not be reactive to what uh, one camp is bringing. Okay. Because if it is reactive, it uh, changes the entire purpose. Mm. For example, if uh, one camp is bringing a certain uh, condition or a certain promise on the table, mm. the other camp should not come with a reactive measure Mm. Because they should come out with something that is practicable, something mm. they believe in. Now, I am still going to be very diplomatic not to to answer it in in, uh, in the context of being very direct to a certain mm. camp. But I want us to look at this in this way that uh, politics, like she talked of the word interest. Interests, many of these people who are coming to these positions, they have their interests. But then before you achieve your interests, you must also look at the interests of the voter. So when you're looking at the interests of the voter, what are the things that you say to them that, that would make them feel like you're speaking to their situation? So I want to believe some of these concepts are brought in the idea of making them sound appealing to the people, but I want to question their practice, uh, practicability. And I want to, I want to believe that uh, in the long run, uh, because by, by nature, uh, the realists believe that man by nature is self-centered. Mm. And uh, don't blame Raila for coming back all these times, five times or how many times. Because mm. uh, he's, he's, he's a human being. Mm. It's part of human nature. Mm. When you are a baby, uh, if you saw someone else being served very big food on the table, or they can put plates and then they tell you, go and, go and pick. You will first go and check what is in the other plate before you come back to pick the one that's right before you. So I want to believe it is part of human nature mm. to keep wanting power. And it's not the first thing. Mm. We have had someone swear in Uganda. Mm. Okay, so I think the presidents is something that is just trying to mm. yeah, promote. But uh, maybe in the long run, if things change right now mm. and they have voted maybe a young blood, Mm. But we're talking about, I don't want us to use age as a factor of measuring performance. Mm. Because if you look at America right now, how old is Joe is Biden? Is he performing well? 
The, well, would you want to have him as? It depends on which angle <laughs> you want to judge him. <laughs> okay, I've seen American president. The performance oh, of Trump was better. The performance of an individual <laughs> is yeah, best. He has been criticized. Yeah, yeah. Trump, Trump had his criticisms. Biden has his criticisms. Yes, they have both been criticized. Yeah, so yeah. you might look at Trump as a successful person in the economic lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he has made the biggest economic progress in American history. Mm. But how about diplomatically? How about international relations? How about democratically? Mm. So you look at these things. You don't need to look at yeah, yeah, just, just just to get as you as you make your final mm. remarks on that question. Mm. Just enable us to understand something. Mm. I, I, I fail to draw the distinct line between some of these uh, campaign slogans that these two parties, mm -hmm. okay, these two camps are running. Mm -hmm. One is saying freedom is coming mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. and that is Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. As Miola Moja is saying, freedom is here. Now, when you look at the literal meaning of Kenya Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. it means Kenya, Kenya first. first, okay, all one Kenya. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, but Kenya first, really. Mm -hmm. Then when you look at Azimula Moja, mm -hmm. a united resolution. Do, I, there is not so much difference. One is saying freedom is here, then the other is saying freedom is coming. One is saying Kenya first, then the other is saying uh, a, a united Kenyan resolution. There is not so much generic, uh, you know, the, there is not so much originality. <coughs> hmm. do, do you think one is copying from the other? Sloganeering is something that, uh, that has been happening. For example, I want to relate it to Uganda. Mm. Uh, during the campaigns of Uganda, NRM had uh, securing your future, mm. and then DP had something very close to that. Yes, depending on the same, are they? Pardon? <laughs> depending on the same. <laughs> that is the allegation. I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, but we are looking at them as independent parties or different parties. Yes. Now, coming back to your question, uh, things to do with slogans. Uh, like I told you, this is about saying something that would sound appealing to the voter or trying to conceptualize something to mm. fit what is uh, maybe best happening at that moment. But uh, to say these two people, uh, one has talked about Kenya first and the other one is talking, for me, like I said before, it is all about one principle coming before the other and then the other formula formulating their... Mm -hmm. Their slogan may be as a reactive, oh, reactive. Yeah, measure okay. to the other one. Fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yvonne, let us explore some bit of constitutionalism, right? Mm -hmm. And the question that I would pose to you is regarding the Kenyan constitution. More so, it's 2010 constitution that, you know, brought in the aspect of running mate and deputy president, but also that strengthened the aspect of checks and balances, mm -hmm. the aspect of, you know, separation of powers you know, the, the judiciary being independent from the executive and all those things. So I think that the Kenyan constitution has actually played a big role towards strengthening its democracy. Mm -hmm. But also we know that UK has no constitution. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. UK has no constitution. They run their country. No written constitution. No written constitution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, 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 they run their, their governance on conventions and on acts of parliament and, you know, you know arguments really. So we cannot be so quick to say that Kenya's democracy is growing because of its strong constitutional framework. But also there is an aspect that the constitution has, you know, has played. Mm. So let's just ex explore that constitutional framework that Kenya is running at the moment, whereby for you to become, for example, chief justice of the country, you must go through public scrutiny. Mm. Whereas for us here in Uganda, it is, it is, um, it is a closed door affair. You know, you are you are appointed by the judicial high commission. Then you go to parliament. You're vetted. Then the president. You know, it is it is it is left to a given class of people, the political elite. You know, but the Kenyan constitution tries to bring in the population to vet and to give the opinion. You know, so let's speak to the aspect of constitutionalism in Kenya and how it has played a role in building its democratic tendencies. Maybe of today. before Kais could say something. <clears throat> yes, I just want to interject a bit and say. We need to know that not everything in the constitution in is the constitutional. Constitution is constitutional. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say that? Okay. <laughs> you, to say you can that. write the constitution can have a provision, <laughs> but itself is not constitutional. constitutional. But it is in the constitution. Yes. So I think For example, we have the death penalty in exactly. our laws in Uganda, exactly. but is it really constitutional? Right now, we are actually abolishing Debatable. The anyway, <laughs> Debatable. Um, before okay. maybe I answer your question, uh, yeah. my colleague talked about uh, reactionary uh, economics, mm. and um, 
you are mostly saying maybe the issues that they are centering around should not be something that is coming from that aspect. Mm -hmm. But then I would want to say that, you know, the circumstances most Kenyans are living mm -hmm. in is literally what is driving what um, both uh, these two leading uh, political leaders are actually discussing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, COVID-19. COVID-19 was a huge shocker for most of us. And I know that right now Kenya is in a very huge debt, economic mm -hmm. debt, mm -hmm. you know. And it has driven the worst economic inequalities mm -hmm. already existing in those classes mm -hmm. between what we are calling the dynasty, literally the ones who are... covid billionaires. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The COVID billionaires, and I think that's why Ruto is getting a lot of his power. Now, mm -hmm. he has come up as the hustler. I started with my chickens, I mm -hmm. did this, I did this, but I've reached this level. Mm -hmm. And you have these other leaders who have been there, they've amassed all this land, they've amassed all this money. They've, mm -hmm. But you're in this situation, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not that, you know, they, maybe their issues cannot be economically reactive. It is that the situation is exactly like that. Mm -hmm. And Kenya, for the longest time, even before COVID, mm -hmm. has always had that kind of issue, you know? Most of the insecurities are springing up from that economic inequality, you mm. know? A lot of the woes that are springing up, I recently I saw a story, I think it was from the previous year or the year before, mm. that, you know, there was this man that was, whose car was burnt by border borders, you know? Because I was saying, you're the rich ones, you're driving, you're what, you're what? But me, I can't even pay my rent. You get, people are frustrated already with how the economics is playing out mm -hmm. and the fact that, you know, Kenya is already in debt and it's already suffering. Like, it's, mm -hmm. I would be very sure that it's anything, any political leader is likely to ride on to make sure that he's making his point. Mm -hmm. um, answering your question around uh, constitutionalism, mm -hmm. <laughs> what my colleague said, not necessarily is it that everything in the constitution is actually constitution. constitutional. Mm -hmm. um, constitutions have a lot of power. That mm. one we can't deny. For mm. most countries, mm. that is what sets precedent mm. for how a lot of policies are made, for how reforms run, for how you know it's literally uh, you know, most of what guides most of that policies are trickled <coughs> from the constitution, that's where they derive their power from. Mm. Um Kenya uh, in 2010, I think, they mm. amended their constitution. And mm. I think that still stemmed from several instabilities still mm. they had had in previous elections. Because mm. 2007 was also not an easy election. There was so much violence as well, especially post-elections, you mm. know. And I think they had to put their heads together and sit down and think, how do we solve all this uh, ele uh, election injustice? How do we solve uh, issues of, you know, uh, judiciary independence? How do we make sure that moving forward as Kenya as a whole, these are not issues that we constantly face and, you know, we're constantly in the public for violence every after election. It's, it's something that people talk about. Mm. Um, I know that in that constitution, especially that amendment, they gave provisions for governors. I think mm. that's where the governor, yeah. um, whole county governor yeah. thing, um, stemmed from. Mm. Um, but I'm also going to move to the voices of the people. And mm. I think if you have been, you, most of us are not on ground, definitely, mm. but people on social media talk, people are constantly, you know, sending out their grievances. And as usual, a lot of politics is run on, you know, things for me, me as me, I'm there for myself, mm. you know. So much as you're demarcating all this and you're putting all these accountability mechanisms in place, are they still serving people, mm. you know? You're going through a whole regular, rigorous um process of amending the constitution, uh, putting all these new clauses, putting all, but are they still serving people or it's as usual, just an instrument that is there as a sign of power, mm. but on actual ground, the people that actually have the money or that are, you know, have been placed there to represent you mm. are just there to grab things for themselves. Mm. Um, I've seen people talking and saying, you give us, for example, county governors, mm. but where is our representation? Mm. You know, on ground, there's nothing showing especially when COVID came in and turned everything, they realized mm. the people you just have there in leadership are just there because there's a constitution that has placed them there. Mm. You know, the constitution talks about demarcation, but how many times have we had so many wrangles, especially springing up from land-related issues mm. because things are still not as clear as we thought they would be simply because there's a constitutional amendment. Mm. Uh, so it's not just about, you know, having the constitution that becomes a supreme law of the land, mm -hmm. but what is what trickles from it? Are you mm. actually doing the work that you're supposed to do on ground mm. or it's simply a document that, as usual, it's there for lawyers go to court, mm. interpret, interpret for people. You sit in workshops, you're interpreting, but then it stops there because in actual accountability, as we call accountability, there's mm. nothing shown on ground, mm. you know? Mm. Uh, so much as I know it was amended, and I know there have also been several issues regarding that because I know, like earlier we are talking about uh, the BBI building um, uh, bridges initiative and how 
it also gave Ruto a way. He started becoming a bit uneasy because you know he's made, he saw this as you know these people are trying to gather power to themselves, mm. and then they are trying to drive out some of us who are hustling to get to these positions to do what we want to do that is actually what they see as sounding. You know, I was seeing that you know a lot of those referendums were trying to be related and put into the constitution. But then it still became a very hard hassle because they also made difficulties. A lot of uh, those referendums were also made with hostility because you are not sure, are you amending most of the constitution so that you can serve yourself as usual, or are you actually catering to the common person? And that element is still lacking because COVID came, shocked us. They are now in economic debt. The inequalities are even worse, especially the socioeconomic inequalities. Right. We saw what COVID did. The women that were mostly running the agricultural sector were mostly up in arms complaining, you know, the processes that you see help us before are no longer in place, you know, and there's no incentives, there's no, um, apart from, I think, the, the, the youth initiative that they put in place that mm. ended last year where they were handing out bits of money mm. to make sure you're still running. Mm. We didn't see major initiatives, you know, to mm. assist most of these sectors to come up. Yeah. So at the end of the day, then you ask yourself, what is the purpose of that accountability? Mm. What is the purpose of you, for example, being an independent judiciary, mm. if your work is not trickling down to the people you're supposed to serve? Ah. All right, fair enough. That, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Brian, let me come to you. Um, I'm trying to avoid comparing Uganda to Kenya for, for, for obvious reasons. But if you look at the Kenya... Um, ballot the presidential ballot today it has only four individuals if you looked at the ugandan presidential ballot last year it had how many candidates there are so many around 12 so many candidates so the first question is do you think that the fewer the number of presidential candidates is a better representation of a growing democracy that is one because if you went to america you'd find three candidates or or, or two you know so do you think that the fewer number of candidates represents a growing democracy? That is one. Two, the aspect of transition of power, peaceful transition of power. I'll take you back to Ghana. When the likes of John Kufuo overthrew Joe Rawlings, they didn't understand how to, how, how, how to, they, they, they didn't understand how the transition of power right? happens. So, they actually saying that, okay, now do we go to state house the following day? So it's actually a, a process of its own, mm. you know. And that's why they had to appoint a, a, a transition chairman to guide transition. Well, and Kenya has managed to grow in that realm tremendously. So two aspects. One, do you think that the fewer the, the number of candidates on the presidential ballot represents a growing democracy? But two, do you think Kenya has matured in terms of peaceful transition of power. You, you, you see, you're discussing uh, Uganda and comparing Uganda as if Uganda has an election. That's why I said I'm trying to avoid... <laughs> that's why I said I'm trying to avoid... No, Uganda, no, no, Uganda, has, no, Uganda has no election. Yeah. The only election you can talk about is a free and a fair no, election. That is, no, that is in your view, Brian. Yes, yes it's my view. Yes, that is in your and view. And again, give my view. Yes. So, can I, can I, give so my, can I give my your view? statement and say can, that can, in my view, okay, okay, Uganda in, has okay, no okay, election. In my view, yes. Uganda has no election. Yes. All, we, all Uganda has is something organized mm. to make those who are in power be able to enjoy, to, 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 to cement themselves and legitimize their stay. Mm. Uh, but not because the people are deciding, never. Because uh, you can imagine today we would not be able to use the internet if we are in Kenya. Kenyans at, uh, have, have their phones in the, uh, in the lines. They are, they are voting and taking photographs and sharing them. Mm. Every candidate has a, a tally center. Nobody will attack it. Like uh, Chopper, attack FDC and the NUP in, F, in, F, in 2016 and, uh, mm. and took away all the election materials that were there. Mm. So, so it's not that you have an election here, but we have, but of course the, the elite capture, the, the junta makes sure that we think we have one, but mm. Being, being who I am, I don't think we have one. Okay. So, so we cannot talk about winners and losers if elections are not free and fair. First of all, okay. but 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 also to mention that the, when you have a junta like the one we have, uh, you have it has to have its candidates on the ballot. Mm -hmm. There could be twelve candidates in Uganda, but only six or seven is candidates. When six are his and he's the seventh, so the real contenders in an election may be a four, and people know them by the way. Mm -hmm. They know this one is. You find Katumba oh yeah. Could you just run us through how many candidates, in your view, you think were were seven? I, 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 I think Katumba and Mo were seven candidates. Mm -hmm. 
in this in that in uh, that election i think abed bugani was always a seven candidate previously in it, in all the three here was general tumukonde i don't think so do you have evidence for that no no i don't have, to have I, I have i have made an allegation if uh, katumba want to go to court they can go to court they'll sue me personally because i'm saying it we shall handle it from there uh, uh mao you ma need to put a disclaimer for that <laughs> mao mao who was a candidate mao who was a candidate in the other election is now a minister in but kamya who, who was running as a candidate at one time federal alliance yeah. is igg mm -hmm. but, but but like we said uh, the alliance is changed uh, no 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 no, no. <laughs> akena has never run for president akena has known his place and mm. so upc ali Mm. Now DP is sold. We are waiting for other parts of the sold. It's about service. Yes. No, no. Problem also it's thing but that I thought, Ruto was, but a, I was a deputy president. Yes. 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 No, but even yes. at one point, Ruto and Raila were actually yes. close partners. Yes, yes. yes. So yes. close yes. friends. Yes. So now they are running against yes. each other. Yes, yes. yes. The <laughs> problem, problem, so the problem, problem I'm having. Ruto was actually uh, accused of the of spreading yeah. violence on on Raila's side. That's exactly. Why, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, I that's why that's why that's why I went to ICC. <laughs> he was Ruto's person. I was Raila. Raila's person. Raila's yeah. person. Uh, Kenyatta was, was the Kibaki's Kibaki person. Yes. But, but, but to cut the story short is that, again, you're comparing election to a military junta. We want to discuss it because I don't want, I don't want to go there. Mm. So, so, so the, the appearance of candidates are a reflection of where we are. We are still backward in terms of democracy and there are fair elections. Mm. So, so the fewer the number of people you have on the ballot, the more the clarity mm. it is, you know, the population is interested in these two things. Mm. Wajakoya has tried hard mm -hmm. to, say, to bring in a new dimension and he has some votes. The other is why uh, the, uh, the fourth candidate doesn't have uh, the reverend. Let me, just read, season, season. let me just read the candidates and their names for you. Yes. We have on the ballot, we have Rail Odinga, yes. we have William Bruto, okay. We have Waihiga. Yes, Waihiga. Mwairu. Yes. Mwaire, I think. Yes. Then we have the Ganja man. Yes. Waja, no, no, no. Wajakoya. Wajakoya. Professor Wajakoya. <laughs> <laughs> only four. Only four. Yes. So. Now, now, now. And I want to tell you, say, one, the, on, the only person who has in on the continent mm. uh, involving people in manifesto formation mm. since, since I became of age and started following is actually the Kenya Kwanza candidate. Mm. He, he heard mm -hmm. Economic forums at every county government mm. called the people to input mm. in the in so so the, the so the Kenya Kwanza the Kenya Kwanza manifesto mm. is not reactionary as one to say if it is reactionary it means the population is reactionary because mm. the population was involved. Mm. To listen, they even went to a diaspora, went to Canada, went to UK, went to America to meet Kenyans to input in the following policy of that same document mm. and therefore. It is very, the Kenya Kwanza uh, manifesto is very inclusive. Mm. Every person has uh, participated yeah, in its formation. Mm. The mm. others, that's why it is bottom up, bottom mm. up. The other ones, oh, the dynasties have sat in their offices and brought some documents and they have thrown them at the people, they are mm. going to be manifestos. But also there are county charters that, yes. that Ruto signed on signed Saturday. Yes. An agreement with him, with the county government, mm. that when I am, when, when, we, when we take power as Kenya Kwanza, mm. this is what we shall give you. Yes. And therefore, I find, I find that freedom coming more about, and that's economic freedom in their lifetime. Mm. They are, they are, we are South Africa and Kenya, mm. the elections are free and fair, mm. I think. Mm. But uh, the economics is, 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 is towards one side mm. against the other. Mm. I, I think the 6,500 uh, mm. talk of, uh, of Azimio, Azimio uh, mm. Party, it's, it's something they are saying uh, to attract, to attract, you see, you see uh, Raida's first constituents was the, actually it was around the mm. So, so he, he has maintained that mentality of uh, having handouts. his uh, mm. handouts, and mm. see handouts won't work to, to make people uh, get out of poverty. And sustainable. Yeah, and sustainable, but mm. lastly, the nomination and the voting, the nomination of the Kenya Kwanza candidate, mm. his seconders, mm. who were uh, Emma Mamboga and the, the Buddha man, mm. were attending. But thirdly, mm. his voting early in the morning mm. of, of Tuesday mm. at about uh, seven. S actually, seven. He, voted, he voted around seven. Very early, yes. That it was a very, very strategic. It, actually, it's, it was very strategic for mm. him. Mm. If if he's going, if he was going to lose the vote by 200,000 votes, mm. he'll gain them by that because then he more boosted his voters and his supporters turn up and vote. Mm. And I think it was a very 
were, were, were planned. Mm. He did it properly. But also Martha Karua voted that early. No, no. He, he, he was the first candidate to vote. Mm. And Martha Karua is not a candidate. Martha Karua is the a running, a running mate. Mm. But also a project of, 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 of the dynasty. Actually, actually, in the meet, actually according to Rigazi, uh, Martha Karua is there, secure, mm. uh, Uhuru's interests. So mm. she's just a, a pawn on, uh, on the chess board. So she's not a bishop. So. Mm. Okay, this? then about transition of power. Yes. Do you think Kenya has matured in terms of peaceful transition of power? <laughs> peaceful. Is, 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 yes. Uh, you raised a very important question, especially okay. when you're asking about um, the number of people on a ballot paper. Mm. I don't know if that also makes us question the level of democracy in Kenya or mm -hmm. what we perceive as democracy, because I know most of it is mm. what yeah. we pulled down from colonial. But, like, for example, I know that to become a, a candidate, for example, there are so many stringent um, processes that mm -hmm. go on in there, you know. You have to have a certain amount of money. Mm. You have to have a certain level. Of, there are so many things that happen behind there before you, we actually see your names on the ballot Even paper. Even the education level is different. For exactly. Mm. So I don't know if that actually raises a very important question because yesterday I was seeing a lot of young people saying we are not going to vote. Really? Yes. Mm. Youth were saying this doesn't seem representative. We are not going to vote. Mm. I don't know if that actually raises a question because on that ballot paper we have four strong men. Mm. Mm. Eh? Mm. And they are all coming from that background we are seeing. We are, mm. It's so... Mm. I mean, for Uganda, we're seeing people like Katumba we we'll be like, hey, there's a yeah. Yeah, boy. Hey. Yes, like, you, you make that noise because it's you blended. see at least someone yeah. close to your age, someone yeah. close to your financial status, you get yeah. yeah. But now, I don't know if your question what? raises a very important G G G key question G G on G representation, mm. one, and then on those processes alone, mm. are they actually friendly? Are they, is it a, in a way, a meaningful participation for yeah. like, the general population yeah. Yeah. to actually be able to be on the ballot paper or before you're even thought a candidate. There's so many stringent methods you have to go through before you can represent, even if you wanted to. Yeah. I think we shall explore that more in the second uh, phase. Yeah. Yes, as you make your last words and you take a short no, no, commercial. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that you, Kenya has, has managed transition peacefully yeah. from one day to another. Yeah, and uh, I don't think they can have a setback. They can have virus, but they, they will still manage their transitions yeah. very well. Yeah. So they are mature. Uh, but was was Arab Moi to Mike back a, a peaceful transition? Uh, who Mike mm -hmm. back? So, sorry, uh, Arab Moi to Mike back. Yes, uh, it was yes, actually, actually, uh, in that election, mm. which something is going to repeat itself in this one. Mm. In that election, Arab Moi clearly supported Uhuru Kenyatta mm. for president. Mm. 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 They went to the vote and uh, Kibaki, Kibaki working with Rahiro Odinga, beat them thoroughly. Mm. Mm. They came properly and uh, considered defeat. But no, that was also a coalition, NAC. Yeah, the it's, National it's, 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 coalition. That's how they run their, their things. Now, okay, uh, this man, uh, mm. uh, Arab Moy, mm. uh, told Ruto and the. And the and who uh -huh. pre to prepare a concession speech. Mm. They conceded, mm -hmm. they moved from State House with the Musei Arab Moy, mm. went to, to the stadium mm. and properly mm. handed over power mm. to, to Mike Bakke. Mike Bakke, Mike became State House. Mm. And that was beautiful. I don't, I don't think I was sitting in my lifetime in Uganda. <laughs> now let's be optimistic. No, no <laughs> Be optimistic Moses. a bit, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm taking a short commercial break. Sorry, but okay, but yeah, point. in a minute. You're also, we are, I feel like we've looked at that question in a vacuum mm. because if you're talking about peaceful transition, is it just about these two people that yes. have exchanged mm -hmm. power yes, or it is a general population? Mm. Mm. You know, if you're having violence after an election, are they peacefully transited? Yeah. Good question. Yeah. I think let's begin from that after the break. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Youth Roundtable for you. We hope you're enjoying our conversations, but also there's a way you can participate in this conversation. There's a comment section right below your screen. Let us know what you think. If you agree with Brian or Yvonne or Helen or Carlos, let us know what you what particular agreement that you have with them. But also, if you disagree, give us your alternative opinion on the chat show. For now, take a short commercial break. Just don't blink, because when you blink, you miss out. See you shortly. <laughs> Yes, our lovely viewers, many thanks for keeping it uh, on this show. Well, we shall cut straight to the chase and uh, we shall begin by exploring 
because you know that from 2010, the constitution as amended provided for presidential running mates and not vice presidents that are appointed by the president after getting elected, but rather you choose a running mate and you run the campaign with them and you know when you win, yeah, you form government together. So we shall explore the factors that uh, influenced the Azimiola Moja camp in picking the Honorable Martha Karua, but also shall explore the factors that led to the Kenya Kwanza camp picking the Honorable Rigathi Gachagua as Kenya Kwanza's running mate. And I think um, from the feminine lens, Helen, let me just, many have you know, said that the Azimiola Moja camp picked Martha Karua because of you know, the whole feminine perspective that Kenya hasn't had a vice president who is a female before, so that the Azimiola Moja was tilted towards the gender lens in picking Martha Karua. But also notwithstanding her experience, she's mm -hmm. former Minister of Justice, you know, she's also former, I think, MP and mm. I think also former presidential candidate. I, I mean, we cannot only, you know... Yeah, for, uh, for, former candidate for governor, yes, said well, by Anna Waiguru. Yes, mm. all those things. <clears throat> so, I don't want to put the, 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 the gender lens on your eyes, but do you think there was a gender lens that was considered, I mean, as, as a woman, as someone who would love to see women rise up to the top? Mm. Do you think it was a good choice? Well, good choice will be seen from the results okay. because uh, we want to see, uh, as let's say, Raila would want to see what Martha Cora will bring on the table from the mm. results. Mm -hmm. If um, I'm sure they sat down and they're like, you'll handle this, you'll handle that. And from the results or from what we shall see, we shall be able to tell that it was a good choice. Mm. But from the perspective of being a woman, of course, we would want to see representation. Mm. And we would want to see, because as much as people would want to dismiss that um, it shouldn't be looked at as representation or people shouldn't be chosen because of gender and what, mm. we've seen so many people be inspired. Let's say if you are a woman and you see a certain woman on top, you'll mm. be inspired and then you bring on table other qualities that you have. But mm. so many people have been inspired because of gender. Mm. And as women in the East African community, we applaud Raila Odinga for choosing Martha Karua as a runmate. But m more so from what you say that from her experience, Martha Karua has leadership experience. And from I'm, I'm more so certain that while Raila was choosing Martha, it was probably because of her influence in the mountain country, counties. She, she comes from the counties of the mountainous areas and Probably she has been delivering, much as we, we might say that she has lost some, some I think she lost. So, 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 so governor. Uh, yeah, she uh, lost governor. Of but Kriniaga, yes. against uh, 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 Anna, Anna. 2017. Yeah. Mm. But uh, she has won countless times. She has served in uh, uh, as the Minister for Justice. Yeah. Uh, and that is not to say that is a small position in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we are hopeful that probably if Raila wins, Mm. Martha is bringing a lot to the table. And also former MP of Gichugu constituency. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So as a leader, you can't dismiss. For example, if we had seen Martha just coming out of the blue, we would question that and just say it was representing women. No. Mm. I'm sure Raila looked at the, rep the representation on, based on uh, her leadership experience. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, we like we said, we do not have any female candidate on the ballot yeah. for president. So seeing a vice president be a woman is something that everyone would want to see, especially mm. if you're feminist. And this has nothing to do with gender. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I, I think I agree with you, because when you look at uh, Martha Karua's biography, you know, uh, an, an advocate of the high court, you know, she has, she, she has been very active. She has been in the trenches of Kenya's politics. To an extent that she ran against the NAC coalition in 2020, 20, 13. 13. 13, yes. 13, yeah. So I, I, I think that yeah, she has she has proven herself and I think that the gender lens could have played a factor true, but I think that she's also meritorious. You know, mm. she, she has the merit and well deserving. Well, let's explore Rigathi Gachua, who prefers to be called Mr. <laughs> but well is a is a honorable <laughs> member of the uh, uh, parliament. Be, be, before, what inspired Kenya Kwanza? Be, before Rigathi, <laughs> I would want women to understand uh, that I would want to see women rise. But it will just be on merit, not because they are just women. Yes. And for that one, I have uh, a daughter. She will always know. She will get what she should get because she has worked for it. Mm. This narrative of wanting to say we just want women in positions has actually made some places very docile sometimes. <laughs> not that women are docile. Some women are very, very, very good people. <laughs> but I'm saying we should only give women 
what they work for. So women must be encouraged. To, as we empower them, they must also work hard. Mm. Uh, not to say Mata Karua is a, is a, is a good brand, mm. but uh, whether, she, whether she has influence in the mountain, mm. uh, I doubt. And uh, the results are going to be showing on how really, because whether, whether Raira wins, but this is the, the mountain miserable, the reason for appointing Mata will not have happened. Mm. You can win the election with Mata Karua as a running mate, but if you don't win the mountain, it means... But maybe how about if you look at how the women are going to vote? No. I'm saying not only the mountain, no, the women no, across no, the country. The, the, the big, yeah, the big, the, no, no, yes, the, the, the big, the, the biggest problem is thinking that women of the mountain cannot vote their own, but women somewhere else will vote their own. The women are going to vote no. for uh, who, who voted, who are going to vote for for Kenya Kwanza. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya Kwanza, even when Kenya Kwanza is the only is the only uh, part, the only coalition without a woman running it. Uh, it's, only that three, uh, yes, it's not necessarily that just because someone doesn't believe in you, you're not worth it. We've seen, we saw uh, Olalo Tunu not vote himself, but other people voted him. It's not beef. Here is about the numbers. Yes, what I'm saying is, it's not true that just because you're not voted in a certain area, then you're not, you do not have the qualities to become a leader. Uh, okay, okay. But also uh, that's a direct um, uh, undermining of representation. Yes. You know? Yes, mm. saying... Young people. Yeah. Don't even go for two mm, women. Mm, young mm, people. Mm, mm. Yeah. Young people look at the person that is closest to what the okay. ideal you know, level of energy is, and that is what they run. Okay, to, okay, you know? okay, okay, so, okay. Representation <laughs> things are hard. Uh, minorities are minorities, we know. But we should not also want to be a majority with a minority mentality, like mm. youth and women who are majority, mm. but they are minority mentality, and uh, therefore, they don't mean support themselves. When Beth Kamiya runs, she gets zero. Mm. When Matakarua runs, she gets uh, 60,000 votes uh, in 2013. Mm. But now she's a woman because she's a woman of Raira. So mm. she's getting energy from Raira as a man, not her as... Empower yourselves and be stronger. Yes. Mm. Then Raira wouldn't have chosen her. No, he, he's actually by choosing Raira, by choosing uh, Batakarua, Raira spoke English of the elite, not the politics. Now mm. going to regard Gashagwa. Mm -hmm. Regard Gashagwa is not regard Gashagwa's family. Uh, first of all, mm -hmm. is not a norm, is not an average family. Regard Gashagwa's parents, both of them, father and mother, were part of the Mau Mau uh, rebellion fighters in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Rigad Gashagwa is literally uh, a, a son of two soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, as per Kenyan, uh, and, and you know how Mau Mau people are revered. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, Rigad Gashagwa's brother, before he died, he was governor. And uh, people have accused Rigad Gashagwa of being involved in working with the county government to have some money because his brother was. But Rigad Gashagwa, the man, has been, a, has been involved in public service since the Moi times. And uh, like he said, where, where uh, you could accuse me of working for Moi, but why do you want me to work? I, I was there in Moi's time. And so mm. 2017, Rigad Gashago has been a member of parliament. Mm. And uh, to, your, to show that he was a remorseful person, or he was very, very humble, uh, though he doesn't uh, exude that, he went and uh, was running for MP UDA ticket. So mm. he first won, the UDA ticket for MP. Mm. And then he came and said, okay, but even if I am going to be uh, an MP, mm -hmm. I, would also, I can also be uh, a running, running mate. Mm. Professor Kindik mm. and Anna Waiguru. Anna Waiguru and went, went and got his uh, governor ticket. But uh, Kindik thought because he is the Polish one quote in courts, Ayogaru Zungurunji, he will be picked as, uh, as a running mate automatically. Uh, but looking at mobilization skills in terms of mobilizing, looking at how people were, how, how the voters are, and how you can encounter an aggressive step against you, I think what informed them is that we are going to war, and therefore must choose a soldier, not uh, a Ruzung speaking person. Mm. And that's how I think regarding Gashagwa, with his mobilization skills, with his power and his influence in the mountain, not with Kenyan politicians from the mountain, but with Mwana Inch. Mm. Because the Kenyan, the Kenyan politicians from the mountain region did not want him to be running it. But when, when, when like he said, uh, it took about 17 hours to choose him. When phone calls were made on the ground, you would find that politicians are speaking one thing, not similar to what regarding, what, what regard had been with the people of the mountain, mm better than every country against him. Mm. And therefore, to bring the mountain on board, mm. they needed a person who can read Kenya Kwanza, 
throughout the mountain without even not appearing mm. and winning the mountain. Do you also want to mention that he has a pending court case <laughs> against him regarding misappropriation <laughs> of government funds? No, is, that, is, uh, is that a candidate uh, you, you, see, you, 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 you see me as a supporter of regards, I want to tell you mm. that that is politically instigated. That's the state, that's the state witch hunt. Mm. They have already said the best has raped. Mm. Best has uh, done this, but they have never because if you if you, if you, if you get a man mm. of regards stature from his farm in front of his children and his grandchildren and his uh, wife, beat him up, remove his shirt, put him on a car, bring him to Nairobi. How do you and arrest him, take him to court, ask for uh, money is a cost 30 million Kenyan shillings mm -hmm. as a bail condition. Why does he spend three years or two years without his case being held? Because by the time you arrest him, you must have evidence. So there is nothing mm -hmm. people of country be worried about while, while voting on the countering process that regarding this thing will happen. They can institute cases against you. Mm -hmm. But thirdly, mm -hmm. regarding his money mm -hmm. was uh, accumulated when he was not working for government, when, mm. he was work, when he was a private citizen and uh, doing his private business. Unless you're saying, if you, are, if you do business today, you can't be a politician tomorrow. Mm. So, regarding the pending case, is the... Is just... Just uh, hopeless. State, which are, just which, statecraft. People will not even talk about oh, it. Okay, fair enough. Yvonne, let me come to you. Um, the role of Uganda in mm. Kenya's politics. We cannot avoid that. Okay? When you go back to 2007, the post-election violence, the government that was orchestrated, you know, the, the, the coalition government, mm. the Kofi Annan administration took credit for it. But the undertones who said that that government was actually orchestrated by President Museveni. He was the brain behind how do we have a coalition government to bring together Raila as a prime minister and all those things, you know, appoint William Bruto as minister of, I think, agriculture, you know, it yeah. was... People then, say, accuse, then accuse him of dams. <laughs> people say that President Museven was actually the mind behind that coalition, even when Kofi Annan and his administration took credit for it. But also, in the recent campaigns and elections, we have seen almost all presidential candidates flying to Uganda. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, uh, um, Deputy President William Ruto coming to meet President Museven. We saw um, uh, Rahel Odinga coming to meet uh, you know, President Museven. We saw Kalonzo Musokia, you know, all those candidates coming to meet President Museveni. We didn't see them going to meet maybe Mama Samia Soluhu or maybe uh, Kagame of, or maybe Rwanda or uh, maybe Evariste Ndashime of, of, um, of, yeah. of Burundi or Salva Kiir. They all came here. Um, Salva Kiir is not in charge. <laughs> How can they, I go to meet him? They all came here. I saw a cartoon he was eating pork. <laughs> <laughs> they were eating pork. They all. They all. <laughs> destination and route to Uganda. Mm -hmm. What is there in Uganda that those killer politicians are looking for? Well, um, that's a very interesting question, first of all. Mm. But then also, <laughs> I'll use like a conspiracy lens. <laughs> Not that it's uh, affirmative in um, whatever aspect I use it. Mm. Um, I feel like Uganda has established itself mm. as a uniting factor for a lot of East African countries. Really? If you've noticed so many um, issues that happen in so many different East African countries, mm. Uganda is usually the first to react, you know, mm. looking for means of creating peace or looking for ways of, you know, uh, maybe stabilizing this area. Like Uganda is usually among the first countries to react. But also maybe we can talk about how Museveni has, <laughs> with that strong iron, used the army like generally to make sure that, you know, the East African region is not destabilized to that level mm. because... Kenya, uh, Kenya is a very strong, big economic power, That's you true. know. In East Africa, literally, we can't undermine how big Kenya is in terms of how economically well they are doing. That's right. So at the end of the day, I feel like um, it could also be because there's so much experience. We've had Museveni for quite a while, you know. Mm. <laughs> Most of them have come, they've left. They've mm. Museveni has been there. Mm. And the one key, much as most of us may not even agree with um, his kind of leadership, I would think that the one key thing he has done consistently is he's been very consistent mm. with how he tries to unite East Africa as a region. Mm -hmm. He has made very deliberate efforts, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. We've seen him in DRC, we've <laughs> seen him in South Sudan. In Somalia. You may disagree. I, I'm also not such a big Museveni fan, I won't lie, but yeah. there are efforts that we've seen due. very yeah. visible. Yeah. That I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why that's not true. Credit where it's due, right? Credit where it's due. Yeah. Much you may disagree, may have done whatever he's done, 
but he makes that effort, you know. Mm. And I would see the reason why, because at the end of the day, a disunited people mm. cannot stand up for themselves, mm. you know. So if East Africa as a region, we are continuously fighting each other, we are continuously saying, oh, this one is one, blah, blah, blah. and you know, you have this leader that has been in power with all this experience of all previous leaders, he's been in power of seeing how, you know, things have been running. I think technically, ideally, in your head, the first thing you're thinking of, let me go to someone who is a bit experienced in this mm. thing. And also you want that kind of person on your side. Mm. Museveni has quite a lot of power, mm. you know. His army doesn't just operate in East Africa. Mm. They have used it to do so many other things, not even just in Africa alone. Mm. He's been used as a powerhouse mm. to do a lot of uh, unity, to stabilize places, mm. Somalia, ETC. So, so does so this then like, present him as a father figure in the region? I do feel like that is exactly it. I didn't want to say it because mm. I'm not the person who puts that role on people. Mm. But then he has that experience, mm. you know. And at the end of the day, if you want to lead, mm. uh, you know, there's this person that has been there and he has this experience. Mm. He's been working closely with your forefathers. He's been working closely with your people. It is not a relationship that you want to crumble. Mm. I've seen Raila making a couple of statements, mm. you know. Mm. Ah, Uganda. Mm. Mm. You mm. heard the word. Yes, yes. You know. Uh, diplomatically, that's a bit dangerous because as a region, the first thing you want to do in power is not disorganize mm. the powers that you're supposed to unite and make sure you have a united front. Yeah. We're not just fighting ourselves. There's mm. a much bigger power we are supposed to unite against, mm. you know? Mm. So it's a bit dangerous diplomatically because you can't assume that you're going to work in a vacuum. You're mm. not. Mm. You're going mm. to have collaborate with other leaders. That's right. You're going to have to work with uh, other, like so many other nations and multi-stakeholders that are going to help you mm. um, at the end of the day. So keep your country running, mm. you know? So it's very important yeah. that much as you're coming into power, we've seen the Tanzanian president also stepping in. She's new. We've seen uh, DRC doing the same. And then we are also in this region, uh, sorry, in this uh, process where East Africa is literally integrating into so many countries. Mm. And we're trying to all bind ourselves into yeah. one united region. And then here you're making statements like... And then you're just making very... It's a, yeah. I found it a bit careless, mm. much as I'm not really inclined to any party. Mm. It was a bit careless because even if I don't agree, we've seen what has happened in Uganda during mm. elections, and it's very visible. Yeah. But this is a person that you're going to Bec need. Be because just to actually substantiate your point, yeah. because you recall that... The, the EAC is not a new federation. Mm -hmm. It was there so, before, even in the yeah, colonial days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one of the factors that led to its crumbling mm -hmm. were statements that were made between mm -hmm. President Idi Amin Dada mm -hmm. exactly. and Mwali Mujilas Nyeri, mm -hmm. one, re one referring to the other as, as, a, as, as a woman. Yeah. You know, so so I, I think I agree with you for <laughs> diplomatic Exactly. For diplomatic reasons, you really be, had be been very careful. slightly smarter than he is. Mm. The issue is in how you act. You know, mm -hmm. it maybe is already instated and becomes the president. Mm -hmm. How can you have those conversations with Museveni and says, you know, Uganda is having these issues. We're already an East African federation. We're already an East African region that is trying to belong to one community. How can we resolve them? Mm -hmm. But your first intel is not for you to expose what you're... Okay, they're already there in media and ETC, but yeah. you don't want to expose your disunity. Mm -hmm. The powers are already trying to disorganize you. Mm -hmm. No matter yeah. how much issues you're having as a country, as yeah. a region, mm -hmm. diplomatically, you know. Fair, uh, uh, and as a scholar of, of international <laughs> relations, of course. I, I, I want to agree a lot with whatever she has said. Mm. Under international law, we have this, uh, this, this statement that the respect of international law is dependent on how strong a country is. Okay. Mm. Because if you have studied international law anywhere, the first question they always ask you is international law law. Mm. Mm. Now, if uh, that is the thing, I want to apply it in this situation with uh, Raila and Uganda, for example. Raila, it was a, a little bit uh, diplomatically very, very, uh, I, I don't want to use a very harsh word, but let me say it was uncalled for. Mm. Yeah, the statement he made. And other candidates coming to seek maybe guidance from Uganda, it is not new. Mm. Because this is not only seen in Kenya, we have seen when South Sudan has issues, mm. we have seen Uganda acting like a political godfather of the region. Mm. But also, I want to talk about uh, President Museveni as a, a kingsmaker in the region mm. because uh, his, his experience. Mm. Its influence and what is Uganda's foreign policy anyway? The first in it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We're looking at being a territorial uh, super, superpower, mm. or oh, we are we are looking at Uganda being the the steward of the region almost. Mm. We are looking at it uh, in the military aspect. You, you said Uganda is in Somalia. Uganda is in DRC. Uganda is here in South Sudan. Mm. Now, 
these are unifying elements of a leader. Disregard how the approach works, okay? But look at the intention. The intention is to unify. The intention is to create a certain uh, kind of uh, a conducive environment for us to, you know, live. So I want to believe that President Museveni is as influential as he has never been right now. The longer mm. he stays in power, the more, the more influential he becomes. Mm. And that is regarding uh, that aspect. Mm. Now, when we're talking about uh, the Kenyan uh, uh, politics, is, uh, I want to define democracy. There's something he talked about. You know, demo there cannot be democracy without election. But there, there can be uh, An election. election without democracy. You know that? There can be democracy. There cannot be democracy without election. Because election is part of what democracy entails. Mm. But you can never have uh, election as an evidence of democracy because it can come with malpractices, it can come with all the vices. And, and, uh, that democracy yeah. doesn't agree with. Yeah. Mm. So I want to believe that uh, in the long run, whereas Kenya's election is turning to be maybe, it could be violent at the end of the day depending on which side would feel uh, offended or which side would feel like they don't deserve to lose all if they out if, if they offended if them, the outcome because they could also be offended but you don't want them to react we must uh, allow that uh, in election there will always be a winner and a loser and the winner will be content okay he will be contented with whatever comes <laughs> out <laughs> but then the okay <laughs> then what about the loser yeah. So, so some, in some uh, parts of uh, the world, for example, America, mm -hmm. you saw Trump getting stuck in power, refusing to get out of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the position, trying to say that the election was not free and fair. So, if you try to say that uh, maybe the revolution of the, the for example, Ruto is called what? The, the Hustler Revolution. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the Hustler Revolution and the kind of people who associate, who attach themselves, like here in Uganda, we have the people power movement, and you find the youth are so energetic. And are you telling me, in case the Hustler Revolution loses, and then it will be something that would force people on the road? And then, how about the other side if they lose? So, at the end of the day, we must learn to accept what comes at the end of uh, the election. But mm -hmm. the only important thing is we should always deliver to people what they have decided. We should not mm. alter results. Mm. Okay, If people have decided that Hasela will be their president, the other side should learn to accept because mm. it's part of the practice. Well, yeah, fair enough. I, I think, let me now just shift the question that I'd, mm. I, I, I'd prepared for you to, to comrade Helen. Mm. Helen, um, the region and of course the world is grappling with post-COVID-19 recovery, mm. you know, the Kenya's debt burden is actually very high, if you look at it. So nine, the, nine, nine trillion yes, shillings. Kenyan. Mm, yes. Kenyan shillings. That's, that's, that, that, that's time of 35 our money here. Yes. So, so <laughs> that's a very high debt burden. So I think that, you know, any government that is attempting to capture power or to, I mean, to be elected into office should focus their campaign around post-COVID-19 economic recovery. How do we build resilient economic systems? How do we build, how can we have a more resilient population so that when such, you know, crises happen in the future, the, the population is more prepared economically? So, as a young person in Uganda, what do you think, at this point in time, what do you think a presidential manifesto should look like? What areas should not miss out in any presidential election, given that, of course, obvious factors, um, the, the, the ever-growing young population in the region, but also, two. The one, that the, the one that I've already mentioned, the post-COVID-19 recovery. So what do you think an ideal manifesto, be it for Kenya Kwanzaa or for Azimiola La Moja, should have captured? What points are non-derogable that any camp should have dealt, dealt on? I think one of the biggest uh, any candidate should be is uh, pushing for the East African integration towards trade. Mm. Oh, yeah, like economic integration. Yes, economic integration. Mm. Uh, President Seven has always mentioned the factor of uh, population. Mm. That the <coughs> bigger the population a country has, mm. and now I want to take it to the East African community, the bigger the population the region has, mm. the more easier for us to integrate economically. Mm. So any any candidate coming out to you know 
try to push uh, an agenda, a political agenda, mm. should push the East African integration economically. Why? Because the more we come together as a, a region, meaning if let's say Uganda has, we are, I think we are pushing for 50 million by Ugandans yeah. population. Mm. Kenya is about pushing 55. to 70. Mm. No, uh, around there. Uh, around yes, there. Around, around, the same, uh, yes. around 50. So, yeah, around 50. Yeah, like what, what we should try to push. For example, economies like China, mm. the best things specifically on the population. Mm. Any product, uh, we, I, I am a, a production person, like I, I do produce, I'm a manufacturer. Mm. And literally what you base on is uh, the population. How many cells are you making in a day? How many, if you're producing something, how many people are taking this product? For some people that are not manufacturers, you can say, for example, if one person buys an iPhone of let's say 3 million, mm. And let's say a certain person is uh, selling something of 1,000. It doesn't matter whether 10 people buy that. You will not beat the other person that has sold up, uh, one. But in Africa, where you know that people, not so many people want uh, one product that costs 3 million, mm. you need to, uh, to focus on a trade that is focusing on a population. Because first of all, you know your population is not very rich. Mm. But they're very, they say they can be very many put together. And therefore, if you focus on production or trade, you can actually push the continent or starting from the region. So mm. one of the major factors is let them push, any candidate should be pushing for an integration, trade integration, basing on, uh, focusing on the population of East Africa. Mm. And then another is unity. Okay. Uh, some, uh, I was having a fireplace conversation somewhere and then someone was like, in Africa, uh, what is this thing called? The Prudential is a what? Uh, insurance company. Insurance. Insurance company. They were like, in Africa, insurance companies will take long to work. Why? Mm. Because uh, insurance works in a way that they're coming in to save you. Mm. But Africans from way back save themselves. <laughs> you get like, they will come in and the, you've lost someone. Mm. I'll bring food. Yeah. I'll bring, no, I'll bring food. Mm. I'll bring labor free of charge. Mm. I'll bring, mm. so you reach a point and you're like, but what is insurance bringing? Okay. You get, so yeah. Africans can be their own insurance mm. and a certain candidate vying for, for, for president in a certain African country mm. should, should really preach unity mm. because with that Africa is sustainable. Mm. Like we, we can't reach a point whereby we do not require international aid yeah yeah so two factors unity mm. and pushing for the east african integration how about issues around unemployment given that you know it's a biting factor most of the young people yes yes and uh, unemployment is mm. basically because we are looking at uh government uh public service mm. but africa can um, east africa or uh, uganda or kenya can go beyond that because for example i was reading somewhere and uganda can only employ around 600 people 600,000 in the public, public service. in the public service mm. how sustainable is that mm. so unemployment basing on what the government can do mm. is, is 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 really not supposed to be looked at in terms of public service mm. let's look at job creation but basing on what each individual can produce yeah. i want to take this uh, let's this opportunity to actually plead to ugandans east africans to, mm. to look for what's something you can produce as an individual. Mm. If you reach a point whereby I said everyone is producing something, mm. you realize that you do not even need to go to the public sector mm. because you can sustain yourselves. If you're producing, let's say, yogurt, and I'm producing Vaseline, and you're producing something, at a certain point, T, you will need my Vaseline, I'll right, need your right, yogurt. Right. But it's very rare that you find that every day I'm going to need insurance. Every day I am going to need everything public sector mm. produces but yeah. at every moment you will need a certain product that i am producing or that you are well, producing informal sector, okay. yeah. in the informal Fair. sector yeah. so let's promote mm. the informal sector mm. so much because we have the elites we have white collar jobs mm. and people have gone to school really yeah. but what are they bringing down to the local parts okay. Okay. good like, question like, how you know, to bring in okay okay uh, just this, this is small something that mm. was my question yes so i have something <laughs> to say about it uh, I want to first of all say what was Uhuru's uh, big four when he was coming into power. You see, uh, President Uhuru had the ambition to. That, handle, that was for the second term. Yeah, for the second which term. Which he killed by going into BBI. Yes. Which would accuse him of having scuttled our, our campaign and the 
and therefore made the country lag behind and now that's public. That is team. your allegation. It's your allegation, now, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I want to look at it. One, he was tackling food security. Mm. Two, he looked at proper housing, health, and then uh, manufacture. Yeah. I think those were four uh, big ambitions. Now, what is Kenya's current biggest problem? One, she, someone already talked about the debt mm. that Kenya has. We're looking at the high level of inflation right now mm -hmm. that has gone so high. And then that is impacting from the, the COVID and then the Ukraine war. So that leads me to the third one, which is food prices that are really shooting so high. So if the next leader is coming into power, whereas they have a very good, uh, properly well laid ambition or home in manifesto, me, I think the biggest center of focus should be within that. Vis-a-vis -vis also relating to to the regional integration that she has talked about. Because when we have free market, open market, a wider market for, for, for people to, you know, keep mm. uh, doing uh, the economic activities, Kenya itself is very stubborn when it mm. comes to this uh, economic integration, mm. regional, let me say. Mm. Because when it comes to, like, Ugandan goods going to Kenya, mm. uh, you look at the conditions they give us vis-a-vis -vis theirs coming here. Mm. So you realize that there's... But you, see, but you see, Kenya should not lower their standards. Because mm -hmm. they're in some sort of, you know, integration. Yeah, and, 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 and my point, my toxin. My yes. point, my yes. point is actually, it is us to step up to their standard. Yes, yes. 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 And that is what I'm trying to raise. So if we step up to their standard, that means Kenya should always set a precedence for the rest of the people economically, just like Uganda is the regional almost military superpower. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Brian, I want to bring you in. And we are discussing Ugandans here, you know, mm -hmm. partly. Uh, many of accused Ugandans of being hypocritical, that when Raila Odinga and Uru Kenyatta shake hands, oh, that is mature politics, mm -hmm. okay? When there is um, a coalition of the national rainbow coalition, oh, wow, mature <laughs> politics at play. But when in Uganda, no, the NRIM and DP <laughs> are going to work together, it is treacherous. He's the one who has it is, it is, it is, It is hypocritical. It is, you know, all bad things are said. But when it, it happens elsewhere, it is mature politics. Mm -hmm. Aren't we being <laughs> Where is the line? Where is and and, and <laughs> air in judging our politicians vis-a-vis yeah. -vis how we perceive yeah. other politicians? You see, <clears throat> I thought that you had been following properly. Mm -hmm. But you seem not to have been following properly. So I won't tell you why you don't been following properly. Mm. For example, what is the role of Aero Dinga in the current government in Kenya? He has no official position. So he is right. okay. He is the you know, no. presidential head. Uh, I don't no, know. No, he is working with the African Union. And he is even, African Union. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. No, no. And even before shaking hands, he was working there. So officially so, or unofficially? Officially, actually. As, As a what? Is uh, is a sense of infrastructure engineering for the African <laughs> Union? But 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 um, but, um, but I, I wanted to tell you one thing mm. that. The reason why Ugandans uh, feel betrayed mm. is that the people do not join uh, Museveni for their own good. They join Mr. Museveni for their eating. If Everyone you, wants to eat at a certain I want, I want, I want, I want, Yes, 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 yes. But you see, you're eating, you, you, you've been representing a, a hungry community saying we are all hungry. Hmm. Now, for you, you have decided to leave them and go to eat and you don't go back. <laughs> so, so when you're going to say, I have gone to eat, don't go, I have gone for you. Aha, you, you're eating, what? But, but, but to help consider these things is that if, if, Musebe, if Mao is saying, talking about transition, let me use Mao for example. Today, we saw uh, Kenyatta and her mother, Mamangina, hmm. in Gatundu voting, uh, voting in the morning. You get so they go and the mother goes and votes, I think, for Raida. The son comes and votes for Raida, and he knows he's going away. If Mao can, if Mao can tell us that in 20, in 2026, 20, mm. he will be Mao seven will go to Chihura and vote for Mao mm. to be president, then, then at least the handshake, the handshake should be respected. But where we know the results of the handshake even before it starts? Mm. And we know that it will end up in tears, like mm. they always say. Mm. It will end up that the fact is that... You know, uh, Brian, I mm. think that you are accusing Uganda of unfairly. No, I'm accusing no, actually, not Uganda. No, let me tell you something. Of lying to us that he's let there me tell for you something. us. The book entitled 
it's our time to eat, is the story of a Kenyan whistleblower. Okay? Yes. That demonstrates to you that these coalitions are actually about eating. Yes. yes. So, so when thing. you want to curtail eating to only the Ugandan politicians yes. and exonerate no, the no, Kenyan no, ones and say and say theirs is about you know I I I'll tell you why. Yeah. When Michelle, no 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 when, no, no, no. when Raida goes into the eating, mm-hmm. quote in quotes, his community gains directly. Mm-hmm. The people he represents gain from that handshake. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's going to that seat. When, when he joins, when, when, when uh, Uhuru, Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta joins Raira, who is saying, I'm going to protest, break the Raira, he's trying to make sure that the people, mm. the Kikuyu people who are doing business are not interrupted. Mm. The, there, is, there is a way it trickles down to the common man. Mm. Here, it's up, but it's, it's but there. No, but Mao is saying it is time to discuss a peaceful transition. Yeah. It is time yes, to discuss post Museven. Yes. And in his view, they have tried all alternatives. They have tried to go to the streets up and it has failed. No. So he said, maybe let's but negotiate. Maybe let's, uh, no, 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 but, 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 and see Uganda, see the lead of Uganda, see the lead of Kenya, see the negotiation is there, see the one who's here, mm. see what works and what does not work. Mm. You understand that in their system, like I said, the mm. community which people represent, in this case, the Ruo Nyanza, Mombasa, Transoya, are benefit from the handshake directly. Like the Kikuyu in, in Embu, in mm. Kaija, those, yeah, guys, yeah. Yeah, those guys are gaining from the handshake. And, and, and Ruto's people, are saying, ah, it seems for us we're not gaining from this uh, thing, as in the Rift Valley. So you're just taking us out, so they also come out as a community, with Ruto as their leader. Problem is that I know that in Amur, in, in Ramo, in Kitugum, in Guru, in where Mao comes from, mm. there is nothing the community has gained in Mao's hardship, apart from not being hounded off the roads when he's going home with, with his uh, convoy. And that's what you can gain. But but before the, the, there was there were assertions made here that I thought I should talk about this this notion that exporting violence mm-hmm. is unity <laughs> is a lie. <laughs> and why Museven only why see Museven and want to meet him before their elections? Do you know why? They know Museven can export the violence to their countries actually sometimes. So to, to keep it to keep it, and you see, don't think that Raiders out to bust on Uganda mm. is ill informed. Maybe he knows Museveni supports the opponent mm. and he could be the problem in the election. Mm. So he's simply telling him, you, we know that you, your country have run it like a, a banana republic. Don't bring your, your barbarism from Uganda to, to Kenya. That's one. Two, mm. why Museveni is powerful is because of his informality mm. and the use of the army. Whereas other countries like Kenya, for you to deploy in Somalia, parliament has to discuss it. Museveni wakes up in the morning and you hear that our forces are in, uh, are in uh, mm-hmm. Mogadishu mm-hmm. without parliament approval, without cabinet seating. But, 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 but no, the, no, constitution, uh, the, 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 the constitution gives them that leeway. Yes, to, but, but, to take, but look, to take an, to look, take action look, and inform parliament. Though, though it does, yes, but, but you see, you see, you see and, uh, and, and we have seen, no, no, we have seen, when, when they went to Congo, Listen. when, when they expected the violence to uh-huh. Congo recently, mm. Museven was refusing to come to give, mm. after it was the poor here, mm. you people, you, you have, but actually, in, 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 that one is in terms of emergence, really. Mm. Mm. But where, where you, maybe for the country, but why you are deploying in another country, you know what deployment means? Spending my, my money, mm. I'm a taxpayer, mm. or borrowing on my behalf. Because, yes, because Musa does not sell his cows mm. in Chirugura to, to deploy <laughs> the army. He gets my taxes and uses them illegitimately yes. without telling even my representatives. But that is the law. No, that is the question of the law. No, that impunity. A law, no, that impunity. A law where the preamble says, we the people of Uganda. <laughs> so meaning, it's a law for Ugandans. We the people of Uganda. You recognizing recognizing our history. Not, you know, how I adopt this Can I add a point to something he's saying? Yeah, sure. I see what he's talking about. And uh, especially if we go back to the original question you had asked. Mm. Um, the reason why uh, people have come out to say, you know, this looks hypocritical, this looks... 
I don't necessarily say even at times the motives that have taken people into these coalitions is necessarily to eat, mm. but then maybe it's a level of influence that uh, is accrued on them the minute they are there. You know, you may have the right reasons for why you've joined, mm. but is it that it stays that way? Or have we seen the current ruling party actually end up suppressing those voices until probably they reach a point where they also have no option but mm. either be quiet? Because if you're quiet, people are going to assume you're eating. You may not necessarily be <laughs> making any because money by don't, that. You don't talk wildly. They're going to assume you're eating. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but that, that say, you don't, you don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> anyway, no, whether you talk or not, the no issue manners. is even if... Because he raises an important point. Even if you are... You can reach an environment, for example, that is toxic, mm. and you also end up, you know, and, and not even by reasons of you don't want to become toxic, uh, actually, but you realize uh, uh, eventually uh, 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 you also becoming what? Mm, so it, necessary, it may be because even the ruling party as it is, mm. is a major silencer, mm. you know? No matter what good motives might have taken you there, it mm. is that it's probably the end result mm. that you're actually going to be silenced, mm. and you can't do much. We've seen people that have actually been positive towards, for example, certain reforms in parliament. What happens to them, especially when they are the minority? Mm. You know, what happens? What the, the decisions they are making, mm. you get to hear most of them, or oh, they are actually scared. They're like, man, mm. that guy is going to the fetch me. Is, the you, van is going to fetch you me. Cannot, you disappear. Mm. So Junior and do his yeah. comrade. You mm. cannot clean, Where are they? clean the house from the outside, you know? No, 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 no. As, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I don't make an assertion. I don't make an assertion. Can I finish? No, no, no. Can I first finish? Much as it raises a strong point that, you know, I mean, most of us were thinking what Raila was saying, you know, and we are also trying to defend this diplomatic front. He still raises a very key important mm -hmm. question. Is it that now we become radical and become strong and say no? Much as Museveni, I will need your help. Mm -hmm. You're also doing all these other things wrong and you're going to export so many other wrong things to me as well if I become a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that the approach you used was, ah, man, every, every, every person who knows how you're supposed to do things That's politely or... Uh, it was not the right uh, way to do okay, it. Okay, but <laughs> just, just conclusively, but also I will put you on the spotlight to actually defend your submissions that Uganda is exporting violence to Kenya. Is is there no, a record could, of this? It could. Is there, has, is there a track record of this? No, no, it could. Mm -hmm. Because Uganda has, exp, exp, one, Uganda has exposed the violence in DRC, a neighboring country. Uh, in the 90s, when they... They went to pacify DRC, not to export violence. I, I'm saying, I'm mm. saying, leave this one when you're young and you're looking at it. I am saying, the, 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 I'm saying the, the, the fight between Rwanda and the, and mm. Rwanda and Uganda mm. that took almost 96, a thousand, 96 mm. almost a thousand people. Mm. Our, our soldiers melting there. Mm. And, and on the floor of parliament, the Minister of Defense was saying that actually we have not deployed uh, in Congo. But later he was informed, the Minister of Defense did not know. Later he was told, ah, we have gone up to Chinshasha. We are mm. in the way, we have entered. That's one. The other, yeah, the other day, they exported. You see, you, you, could, you see, the people of, uh, of uh, the people of uh, the soldiers in uh, South Sudan mm. said to make a coup mm. and remove a president. It was their decision. Mm. So, Museveni went and, and silenced them, mm. divided them very properly, and he has a president who looks like uh, a cartoon and he's just there. He's, uh, he, like he's, he's, he's his door. He can say, come here, come here tomorrow. I want a state house. If Museveni makes a call, sir, but kills, yes, 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 sir. Now, now you can be president of Kenya and you're saying yes, sir, to that man. And people say yes, sir, to Museveni, you know what, 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 what we are, the results are. Mm. But, but, but let's not go there. Mm. So, Uganda is feared, not because of the economic process, or, or but the or security in terms of presence, no, it's because we, we are able, Uganda, through Museveni, mm. and his army and his family, because their army, their family army, mm. Uh, both UPDF and uh, SFC, they are able to export violence in other parts of the region. Mm. And therefore, for you to be stable, maybe you, 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 you negotiate with them mm. so that they don't export to you because you don't want to be, and that, that mm. appears to be meted on you. Mm. So you, you try to avoid it. Mm. So Raira could be knowing something mm. that we don't know. Mm. Thirdly, about the diplomats and politics. Mm. Diplomats, for me, for, for me as a person, I find them serious when things when things are not a too bad. When things are bad, you cannot you 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 cannot uh, you cannot peel matoka using a leather bread though it is very sharp. That's you right. use a knife. What do you mean? A, a leather bread is sharper. No, than the knife. In the I, I'm, I'm, in the context, I'm saying. It's a very flawed context. Yes, I'm, the context I'm saying that a politician, though he's aware of the diplomatic uh, behavior, mm. 
Mm -hmm. He must also remain a politician and not be not be not not be consumed mm -hmm. by 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 Diplom. by your diplomacy. That's something you're thinking, mm -hmm. uh, because there is one as a politician you have as a leader as a politician you have to hit. Uh, and then the people also help you pacify what you have said. Mm. No, but okay. let me just. <laughs> this, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, no, no, in simple mm. terms, mm. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah? You're seated here as uh, honorable. I'll give I'm, you the title. I'm Mr. Yes. Brand. Imagine I'm sorry, your two parties again. that have the same energy as you. This is where diplomacy becomes a very key important mm -hmm. role to play. Mm -hmm. eh? Imagine you're two seated like you right here with this same level of energy. You can't agree on something. Right? I agree on many things. No, listen. Imagine. You cannot agree. Yeah? You cannot agree that one, you can be a leader like me, I can be a strong leader like me, and I stand alone. Yes? Imagine you have two Rylers that are both saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and you have no person to balance that sort of power at all. And the only thing we are seeing us here, bullets, 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 bullets. Mm. Yeah? What do you think will happen? To your country, to your people, what do you think will happen? Also, maybe before you answer that, I want to, to relate this to something that has happened before. I'm a follower of so many things on Twitter. Uh, the general, the, the tweeting general, I don't want to mention names, but... He's called the most general guy. <laughs> the tweeting general several times uh, declared some positions in his capacity. Now, you see, in diplomacy, there's something we look at. Your position as a, a person in a country. There are certain positions that you carry and you cannot speak anyhow when you're in such positions. Because in that time, whatever you say will not be translated as you and an individual, but it will al almost declare as a status or a, a standpoint of a country. Mm -hmm. So let's say he keeps uh, maybe uttering such careless uh, statements or that could be translated to Uganda, especially here yeah, as, as a position of, of of, of, of Kenya yeah, exactly. itself, you get? Yeah. So maintaining your, 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 your communication skill is very key in diplomacy. So that even if you intend to do something, you it don't jump. Yeah, you, I there's a word. Okay. 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 Only if it's in your interest and your country's interest. Where, 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 and you see the highest level, I've told my people, the highest level, talking now, that's one level. The, the highest level of, 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 of argument, actually, is actually fighting. Mm -hmm. When you can no longer talk. And, and, and countries have gone to work with other countries mm -hmm. because you have told them earlier old and they don't want to listen. So it's good to have some person in this, in this region who can hold most even actually because it's too much. Forces okay. applied where Fair diplomacy no, no, no. fails. <laughs> Let's not begin a new argument. No. <laughs> Let's not begin a new argument. I want to, no. end, I want to end with, uh, with no, okay. Helen. Helen, you're a young entrepreneur. I know that you're a CEO of um, a product company, right? Mm. So I want us to explore something around the economy and how this election affects the Ugandan economy. We remember that in 2007, the price of fuel actually went up to as high as 10,000. Mm. If you guys were conscious, 10, mm. 15,000 because of what, what was happening in Kenya. So, should the election go either way, how do you see it affecting our economy? So, I'll just conclude with you, then I'll get your last words on the show. So, how do you think the election affects the Ugandan economy? Yeah, and of course, if the election ends, um, the process ends, and then some part doesn't agree with the other, and we go into, you know, violence, interruptions, and what, of course, the economy will suffer. Mm. First of all, the economy right now is suffering. Mm. Inflation. We're already into recession. And if you are to look at the price of fuel right now, mm. we really do not want it exaggerated more than it is already. That's right. And remember last time it was at around 3,000 and it mm. went up to 10,015. 15, now yeah. imagine right now where it's about 6,000. Imagine how far it could go. It could go, yeah. But yeah, we have to anticipate that. And that is why you've seen people economists warning like mm. please if you are a trader in between kenya and uganda mm. find ways of seeing that uh you either stop yeah. or you maneuver through before the election because we have kenya has set a precedence whereby there will always be violence somehow there will always be a certain violence mm. and it being a, a, a an economic superpower in the region mm. uh 
the the trade is interrupted mm. our economy is interrupted as a mm. country and yes if the question is do we anticipate an economical mm. disruption we've already we're already in turmoil because of covid-19 yeah any slight mistake that the region makes mm. during this election we're definitely going into a more like diverse it will like yeah. our imports. definitely yeah. Yeah. imports export anything yeah. and not just to Kenya or Uganda yeah. to other countries yeah. Yeah. because everyone is expected like we were we shall be expecting that as Uganda and Kenya are traders mm -hmm. together then Rwanda will have to be affected as well because right. if i can't export my raw material for example as a manufacturer mm. i get products from Kenya mm. and then probably export them to Rwanda mm. so the, the region itself east africa is yeah, yeah so and i think worse for us because we are landlocked yeah. landlocked country yeah, landlocked so country. we need Kenya so much because we transport many of our products through Mombasa. I think also bargaining power of East Africa uh, as a block, it will go down. Yeah. Yeah. Because as a, as a region, if you're forming a trade union, mm. you must have a strong bargaining power. But if you have such hiccups coming yeah. already... Yeah. So as, uh, to, um, to conclude the point mm. is, like we said, politics is a game of interest. Mm. So as Kenyans are voting or as we wait for the results of what will come out of the election, yeah. we need to understand what interest we have as a region. Mm. That's why when you see President Museveni going into Kenya, it's not just because he loves Kenya so much. Mm. It's because of the effects any election in Kenya has on Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah, we can only hope for the best from the election, mm. but we pray for peace mm. so that our economy you know, it remains where it is as much as it's not as well. Yeah, well, fair enough. Colleagues, it has been an, an amazing show. But uh, I'll give you each just, um, if you're disciplined enough, each of you 60 seconds, and I will time you guys. Just make your last words on the show, but also just predict, you know, are you, do you think Azimio or Laomoja will take it, or you think Kenya Kwanza? So give us your prediction, one, then two, your final remarks on the show. You have 60 seconds, I'll begin with, Huh. Brian is very cantankerous. I will, I will begin with you. <laughs> because Brian could easily set a wrong precedent. He could use <laughs> so much time. So. I agree. <laughs> okay. First of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me for mm. the show. It is a very good platform. Anyone outside there would love to be. Mm. And uh, encourage any other person, if you want to learn more with the youth, you can really, this is a good starting place. Mm. And I'm humbled. Then secondly, about my prediction, uh, I chose not to have a side this entire show, <laughs> so I will still hold that position. But I, I only say may the best candidate win. And then uh, my last word uh, here uh, is just uh, to say Uganda has a lot to learn from this election. Mm. And uh, we should also pray for a stable Kenya because uh, the violence of, of any election at the end of the day is not only felt within that country. Mm -hmm. Like they say in international relations, insecurity in one country is a threat to security in another country. Yeah. So this is how I want to believe that all the best at the end of the day, Kenyans fought wisely. Yeah. yeah. Yvonne, just <coughs> in one minute, if you could um, respond to the question of, you know how the region perceives Kenya as the beacon of democracy, at least in the region. Mm -hmm. So should this election go bad for Kenya, it would have set back the entire region in terms of democratic principles. So I think what he said that this election means so much for the region, I think it's because of how Kenya is perceived as, oh wow, they have achieved as a democracy. So should they make some steps backwards, it could frustrate the democratic um, endeavors and efforts within the region. So maybe just a comment on that as you also use your one minute. Okay, I'll give you one minute and 10 seconds now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'll first give what I would feel is a way forward, especially for the candidate that leans towards. Um, um, Kenya's uh, history mostly has largely um, leaned on the fact that there's been so much socioeconomic um, inequality, mm -hmm. you know. I would think that maybe as a leader who is incoming, your first role should be to determine how you can cure those root causes mm. without necessarily... I know most of them are now 
probably trying to string on to what they feel can you know help them win and become the better candidate that people choose at the end of the day but how can you get into that seat and you become the voice that people have been crying for covid has devastated so many people you know the economy it's not just the economy the social the social setting for people you know domestic violence rates are up teenage pregnancies in Africa, generally, not just Uganda, are really high. How do you make sure you can cater to the mm. common person, not necessarily you that is, you know, the dynasty, not you the hustler that has become the millionaire that we are looking at right now, but you're catering to that person that is, like, down there, the person you're trying to make sure at the end of the day is having a comfortable life, um, the person that picked you to be a representative. Um, Kenya also being an economic power, like we said earlier, and definitely having that large population, if uh, the outcomes of this election are to spill over, that we all feel it, you know? Uganda is going to have extra migrants, I'll call them that because I do not want to use the other umbrella word, because, you know, people are fleeing from the conflict they are seeing. And even before we saw the election, we were seeing so many Kenyan cars here. Busia border was very busy. You know, how can we make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, people are comfortable in their homes, they voted, they've gone back home, they're having their meal, they are happy. And not, you know, a few days after we are seeing all this chaos, because we're also affected at the end of the day. If more people are coming in, that means we are straining us. Our resources, your instability, petty crimes. How do we make sure that you know even Kenya has that peaceful transition mm -hmm. that can help the whole region also remain stable? Because their stability is all our stability. You know, mm -hmm. it's everyone's stability. It's every other country Ten as well seconds. that is in the region. How can we make sure that they have that transition that assists all of us to remain peaceful and continue fighting the other normal pro common problems that we are mm. facing as countries, especially post-COVID. Who will win? So, yeah. what is your... Who do you sympathize with or who do you wish should win? Uh, well, my issue, <laughs> and I'll lean on this candidate because, honestly, I am, like I said earlier, I was seeing the narrative of, you know, Raila Odinga has been resilient, he's been, um, you know, in prison so many times, and me, I'm worried about that kind of narrative because I do not think that is a reason why should someone should be in power. You will fight, you do it, fine. But if me as a person, I feel this person represents me better, I think I should be able to make that decision. Your resilience, your being in prison, because you've suffered not sleeping on a mattress, should not be the motivator or the guilt trip for me to come and vote for you. And then also, <laughs> being in that economic umbrella, <laughs> and uh, seeing this man, the chicken, I love chicken. Um, the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor or breeder, whatever he was calling himself. It it's a very strong representation mm -hmm. that, you know, I can get there. It might be a bit unrealistic, of course, because, man, I might not become a millionaire. But mm, it's, it's very representative for me to know that, you know, you can also get there. Mm. I know it's a bit niche and cliche, but representation is very key. But then also, I feel that energy, you know. Mm. I feel Ruto's energy. I'm going to take a side, mm. and I've mostly given you the reasons. I do not feel Raila Odinga. Deserve. Sorry for I was predicting I'm taking that side. Who will win or who we want to win? That side you're taking. I think both. I think. So who you I think will predict, win, but also who you want to win. Of course, I'm predicting my candidate. Yeah. That I'm feeling. But of course, obviously, you will predict your candidate. Uh -huh. yeah. Exactly, but also because Ruto has been a strong representation, even in the government, is serving where he was serving as deputy. He has also been a voice. He's continued to be a voice that is persistent, you know. He has people's okay, well, issues okay. mm. at heart. <laughs> okay. And I feel it. So, so honestly, I'm so, looking towards this. Kenya Kwanza. You're for, Kwanza. <laughs> you're for Kenya Kwanza. Let us hear from uh, Brian, then we shall conclude with Helen. Oh. Your last words and also who, so, you, who you think will win. So you want peace, a peaceful election mm. in Kenya. You must also fight to have a free and fair election. Mm. When you lose fairly, you mm. go home knowing you campaigned, you did well, but lost. Mm. When you lose unfairly, you are you tempted to fight mm. back. Mm. Seven being the example, couldn't even fight on the streets only, but carried guns because he thought him and maybe other opponents had been cheated by your body. And therefore, if you want a peaceful society, be fair. If you become unfair, you cannot guarantee uh, peace. Mm. So go in there, vote. Make sure the votes are tallied properly and the winner is announced. Not the one you want, but the one who people want. Mm. Then me as a Kenya Panza supporter, whether we win or lose, if we lose and win fair, if we win fair, I am okay because I don't want to win unfair either. If we lose, if we lose unfair, 
where I think people should fight for their freedom and for their vote. That one, they should never even compromise about it. Mm. If it's unfair, you must fight injustice because anyway, what, what is life for if you can't fight injustice? Mm. And that's my position. So if you want peace as government and you, Mamanjina and what, and the, 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 the deep state, please provide a free and fair election, you'll have peace. Mm. If you rig, if you rig and, and so unfairness, mm. accept, accept the results of it. It's the repercussions. People retaliate. Mm. That's it. So I wish Kenya were they will tell you their thing and tell yeah. us who has won and they should tell us the exact person who has won. Mm. I wish Kenya Kwanza were regarding the little ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you have the last words on the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and first of all, thank you for inviting me for the show. It's usually and always a good platform for me and every young person out there. Mm. And yeah, I hope every young person endeavors to watch the Youth Roundtable and see if it's best TV. Yeah. And for my prediction, uh, I will not predict. I will not predict who I want. I will predict who I think will win, and mm. I think Raila will win. Okay. But I, but I really would wish for Ruto to win. Really? Yes. Because <laughs> if Ruto wins, as a young person, I mm. see hope. Yeah. In let's say leadership of the East African region, yeah. I'm a mm. big advocate for the East African region, and I would want to see young people out there. Yeah. As much as 55 is not really young, yeah. compared but, com but compared to 77, really. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, and and as a trader, mm. uh, Ruto has ex uh, shown. Mm. Like he's an economist, really, mm. and mm. yeah, I would want to see young people take charge of the economy of this region. Mm. It is a good sight to see. Yeah. But if it's predicting who will win, mm. I think Raila will win. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think many yeah. have many yeah. have argued that capture. Many have <laughs> argued and and said that um, the Ruto candidature presents a paradigm shift in Kenya's politics, mm. yeah. whereas the Raila candidature presents a continuation of the same kind of dynasty politics. Mm. Well, comrades, thank you very much for sparing time to be on the Youth Roundtable. Comrade Brian, Comrade Yvonne, Comrade Carlos, and uh, Comrade Helen, many thanks for sparing time to be on the Youth Roundtable. Of course, to our producers, it's always a pleasure to, to, for you to work to ensure that this show airs right on time. Well, we don't know how the results will turn out. One side is trading the story of a chicken seller who has managed to rise through the ranks of public service to now challenging Kenya's biggest political dynasty. Well, the other side is presenting a story of a man who believes that his destiny is meant for the State House of Kenya, one who has worked through the highs and lows. He believes he has fought for Kenya's independence. He believes he has fought for Kenya's democracy where it is. He believes that his destiny as a person belongs to State House. Well, that and much more is left in the hands of Kenyans. We know that the telling is already going on, but we hope that the best candidate actually wins. From us on the Youth Roundtable, we continue to say that the opinions on this show are opinions of individuals and not opinions of um, the Youth Roundtable or of Civic Space TV. Well, it's, it's, it's about how you interpret those opinions. We wish Kenya well. We wish them a peaceful and fair election. And from us to you, we say have a lovely week and see you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye.